in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'd like you to greet one another. Please be seated. Let's get to the business of the night. Hallelujah. Jesus, we give you praise. I want to appreciate everyone for the sacrifice it takes love for God to appear before him every now and then and I know that the Lord will do us good tonight in the name of Jesus Christ before I go on with the teaching tonight I I just want to challenge us on two things very quickly number one is just to remind us of the fact that um, what is happening in this place is a very prophetic move of God um, but then you never really understand the move of God as a peace you have to look at the broader picture every man's destiny what we call assignment whether for an individual for a church a ministry or for a territory is their contribution I like using that word contribution because it gives us um, a realization that there are other facets a contribution to the big picture God has an idea he's a, he has an agenda we've taught again and again on the agenda of God the book of Colossians the first two chapters examine intently the agenda of god it tells us the predeterminate counsel of god hallelujah uh, it's important that we do not allow the frequent activity week after week to get us carried away such that we do not um, realize that god is actually going somewhere with us this is not just an endless pursuit a loyalty to a vision a loyalty to a religious activity that keeps us uh, psychologically healthy that we're in touch with God. This is more than that. Praise the Lord. It's important that we, we understand that this is not just a ministry. This is not just a church. This is a move of God. And that we are through this medium connecting to the bigger picture. That which God is doing upon the surface of the earth. When you realize this, you will come with every sense of seriousness. Hallelujah. The second thing I want to talk very quickly about is to fine-tune our expectations. It's important that whenever you come for koinonia, generally speaking, whenever you go to any ministry, any church, um, take time to study the operation of God in that area because god works in different ways through different platforms according to many factors his predeterminate counsel for them their level of alignment to his will the level of permission they have given him in that season to manifest are we together now when god calls a people when god commissions a ministry an assignment there are usually certain graces please pay attention graces anointings and dimensions of the operation of the spirit that is um 
committed to those people. So those who come must be aware that I am coming to a ministry that through grace and through corporate alignment have been able to activate certain dimensions of realities in the spirit. And that coming to that ministry can make it possible. I was teaching the prayer department on Tuesday during their prayer and I was telling them that individuals carry prophetic atmospheres. Are we together now? When you come under the influence of their atmospheres, within that period, you can tap into the reality that would not have happened with your atmosphere. Are we together now? So, when you keep doing that over a long time, there is a transference. There is an impartation. But you see, if you don't realize what is obtainable, Bishop Oyedeko will say proximity is not equal to connectivity. That you are close to an anointing and an atmosphere does not guarantee that you will contact something tangible. So the Lord impressed in my heart really to remind us again, to let us know the dimension of him that is available in this place. Please, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand that this is not some ambition of a man to try to reach people. I know that there are pastors who love teaching as a vocation. They just love to see sinners saved. That's wonderful. But um, this is not one of those platforms. Believe me. I want you to know that what is happening right now is pivotal to the universal move of the spirit. This is not a minor contribution to what God is doing on earth. If you, if you see it that way, you will, you will not give your best. There's been a lot of prophecy about Zaria. Right from before some of us were born. There's been a lot of prophecy about this that is happening right now and in this season. So, we're not just stumbling into a move of God resident within the north. No. There is a mystery behind this move of God that is coming in this season and what God is doing. And so, I want us to understand that we are prophecy being played. Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter 4, the Bible says, reading from verse 16 downward, that he took the book the, the 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 scroll where it was written about him where prophet isaiah wrote about him right and he began to read it the spirit of the lord is upon me and then when he read down he said this day in other words what you see is a manifestation of that when the holy ghost came on the day of pentecost peter told them this is that in other words look you are now seeing the manifestation of something I pray that one day as you study the Bible, you will see koinonia there. That as you study, you will suddenly connect and say, God said this will happen. We are seeing that this is not just a circumstance, but this is prophecy. Hallelujah. I need to tell us this so that our hearts be prepared. It's very, very important. There is nothing, listen, there is no major move of God that happens without being spoken about. I used to see these days, years ago in visions. I never knew it would be this way. Glimpses and pictures of this and even the next levels after this. And I knew that it was you see these kinds of platforms is called an election of grace it's not about prayer and fasting it's not about just wishing no everyone who desires to press into god as we'll be learning can find a place in destiny however there is an election of grace are we together now god always has a move in every territory and every city and it just so happens that by divine predetermination the hand of god can rest upon individuals and he will open them uniquely to certain dimensions of his person and 
vest them with responsibilities to reveal that dimension within their territory this is one of such things you are saying please value it i want you to value it i want you to value it the days that will come will show you that this is not just an ambition of a man of god you know how pastors say look we are going places and the members say i'll be there with you this is not one of those things it's not just that we are going places you will see how this move fits into prophecy it will happen i've lived my entire life and spent my life like the wise men who kept looking at the stars walking this season never knew that it would be a privilege to be one of those who will frontier dimension of this move but i was more than willing to participate i was desperate i i insisted that the move will not happen in my absence hallelujah so you must you must be very intentional brothers and sisters let me tell you if you are here seated in this place tonight is because there is prophecy upon your life believe that if there was no prophecy upon your life you would not be here i'm not motivating you i am telling you that among all these people there are still some people who this prophecy resonates with that's why god made sure that you have to be here in this season and it's important to pay attention so you don't lose your place the fact that there is an election upon your life does not guarantee that you will manifest it are we together yeah the principle of substitution is that which we see in this in, in scripture again and again that the mandate of a man not just his mantle his entire assignment can be given to another we read about saul in the bible right saul the son of kish a time came he was there seated on the throne but the entire mandate had been given to him terah the father of abraham the very assignment of abraham terah was to be the father of nations but he messed up because of lack of alignment and the mandate went to abraham when judas iscariot betrayed jesus christ god insisted that there had to be a replacement for him you see that so brothers and sisters please realize that for every one of us seated here you are not seated here for your sake you are seated for the sake of a generation listen for their sake listen for the sake of your children listen for the sake of those who are hungry for god but may never have access to come to these territories listen as a school pay attention as though you are being trained for something great i've always given my life and the presence of god and the word of god utmost seriousness you never see me distracted in the house of god and in the presence of god you must please pay attention this is not just a time of worship a worship service it's an impartation there is something happening to you there is growth there is ascendance in the spirit four things i want you to always expect when you come here number one this place is a place of encounter please never forget this it's a place of encounter is the hallmark of this ministry encounters encounters with jesus encounters with the spirit of the living god encounters with the word of god and by word of god i don't just mean what you are holding in your hand the scripture that has been explained that has the breath of the spirit upon it capable of producing results in your life encounters whenever you come here you must expect it that something resonates from eternity to your spirit you know that god is in this place through the worship through the testimonies this program was designed intentionally 
to stimulate encounters from the opening prayers the worship and everything that happens it's, it's intentional I want you to know that it was done with encounters in mind so that whether you are seated inside or outside as you hear the word beyond a man there will be a remarkable encounter visionary encounters yes but that the reality an encounter is an experience that supernaturally communicates the reality of a thing to you it's called an encounter when when i touch this flower for instance my touching it gives me a feel an emotional connection to it that's what an encounter is that by the agency of the holy spirit something happens to you in this place that draws you near that, that nearness of the presence of god is experienced number two whenever you come to this place expect remarkable transformation the lifespan of your spiritual stubbornness when you come here is one day in 24 hours something must start fighting you are we together no matter how hardened you are when you come into this place you can choose to argue but it's like a virus it has caught up with your spirit hallelujah you can pretend uh, there's nothing usual about it but i tell you if you come for just one meeting and you never attend you will never be able to be comfortable with the devil again it's, it's like a cancer it's a see there are mysteries that support the things we do it's not just happening there is a revelation that sponsors this have you seen a man you talk to a man and he pretends as though what you said did not get to him then when he goes back he starts thinking about it and say Kai, but this person cheated me oh that's what happens here so when the word of god comes upon your spirit there is a system that has been designed by grace that it stays it sticks to you and starts fighting everything that is not of god hallelujah radical transformation i trust that god will grant us grace that would we'll be able to fetch in the testimonies from the now millions of people literally without exaggeration of people that have been blessed just through these teachings 70 percent of the people that have been blessed through this ministry have never seen me as a person there is a mystery to these teachings the presence of god and its power to change people i've gone for meetings and seen people talk and i thought i was hearing myself and i looked at them and they said sir you have never seen me but i have 200 of your messages i have 250 of your messages i have your message till last week that's the power of transformation to change state right so when you come here there is a paradigm shift the messages are so designed not just to whet your appetite spiritually there are lots of messages that stimulate you to desire the spirit more but there are not definite things you hold i teach especially in points because i want your mind to be able to hold on to something when you want to create a paradigm shift the new ideas you are bringing must be clear enough for the people to understand and receive we are replacing old philosophies we are replacing old ideas about god about life and this is happening by the power of the word hallelujah mental and intellectual alignment still part of radical transformation one of the things that the lord taught me as i have worked with the lord and i've incorporated it even in this ministry is balance everybody say balance i've said it again one of the things that i have um i have been disturbed about in the body of christ is the degree of imbalance imbalance can hurt you as much as a lie 
are, are you following me now imbalance can do you almost the same catastrophe as a lie imbalance and lies is like a man who is inside fire then you bring him out and leave him in a desert it's better than fire but he will still die are we together now so you notice this intentional balancing of spiritual realities as we teach because it is important god will judge me if i mislead you i take advantage of your openness i must commend the loyalty of the people everyone who comes around to this ministry i know you love me i know you love the word of god you believe in what god is doing and there are many of us here who have opened up our hearts that everything that comes from this altar is of god and so i as a person and the leadership generally we owe a responsibility to make sure your convictions are such that can stand the test of time the bible says to be careful lest what you call light be darkness you can hold on to a wrong philosophy forever you can excel in a dimension of the knowledge of god and fail in another understanding that you understand god in the area of prayer and fasting does not mean you understand other facets of him chances are that if i teach you on the anointing and the holy spirit you will think i'm a remarkable preacher until you hear my perspective on marriage my perspective on marriage can be so imbalanced and faulty but you will leverage on my accuracy are we together now you will leverage on my accuracy in the area of the anointing to mean i know what i'm saying that's the reason why every man of god must be on a consistent passion a passionate pursuit to update his spiritual curriculum as far as the move of god is concerned so you don't mislead people i've heard ministers that i respect their perspectives in different areas but i've heard them communicate other areas and i am shocked to see their degree of ignorance it's like someone who imagine someone who is growing and one hand is growing so well and then one leg is not growing you can imagine that kind i have been obsessed about balance one of my greatest concerns in life is that at the end of my life it will not be that i believed a lie hallelujah and that i've taught that lie to people that have influenced millions of people to believe a lie and they are running with that lie and then i ruin their lives with no opportunity to recall them back brothers and sisters this is why we pray for utterance we don't pray because we are scared of preaching we pray for alignment in the spirit we pray that the things that are communicated that even after 10 years that even when there is need for upgrading it doesn't become that that was a lie and men of god here those who are pastors maybe inside outside i challenge you do not take for granted never trivialize the place of adequate spiritual preparation before you come to the pulpit to preach there are pastors now i'm not against people but there are pastors who sit down cross their leg watch football you know eat and do everything and say ah it's time and they just come and say look where did we even stop last week no don't play with people like that take them seriously the church institution is the most powerful mind control institution in africa it's more powerful than banks it's more powerful than schools you are only in the university or any institution of learning for three four or five years or six years and then you are done but every sunday every wednesday every friday every thursday and some churches every day you are in the church submitting your spirit to the influence of a man do you know what it means to sit down and allow a man transfer his ideologies to you that's a risk it's a big risk because our realities are framed by our ideologies so you must be sure that the person you are submitting your spirit and your mind to you will inevitably make decisions based on the parameters he's given you i will not live to mislead people i won't teach you error that's the reason why we labor 
and at any time i find out that what i've communicated is not accurate i do not have any embarrassment to come back and say look let's realign we have seen something clear hallelujah is god speaking to us expect transformation you can measure transformation your degree of change your thinking the way you analyze things, your comprehension of the workings of the spirit. This is part of the indices that we use to measure spiritual maturity. You cannot be coming here week in, week out, whether indoors or outside, and then something is not changing about your life. You can't be doing the same things, saying the same things, having the same convictions. No, the word of God alters your convictions. Something about you must change something about you must change something about your prayer life must change something about your passion for the word something about your interpretation of the word something about the ideology of god you knew growing up must shift it must be altered are we together now something about the ministry of the holy spirit must change in your life if that is not happening you are not changing you are not changing. I detest stagnancy in my life like cancer. I detest it. I'm obsessed with progress. I like to see progress. That's why I hate stagnancy. Anyone who is close to me knows that. I'm constantly in a state of transition. Change. You can't be in the same level for a long time intellectually physically when we look at developing nations or underdeveloped nations part of the hallmark of underdevelopment is stagnancy there are some of us there was one stone near your house from the time you were born that stone is still there nobody has had the initiative that why don't we make this road better it's still there as a monument that does not motivate anything only brings pain and regret you remember they flogged you near that stone you remember that's where they drove you out of the house nothing to inspire you the word of god should change you that at the end of every koinonia service you should just sit down like this and get up i like it when the word of god enters people and i study the reactions of people to the word not just oh preach preacher that's there's a place for that but th that your spirit is is receiving something and you're saying look what am i doing is it, god is giving me too much opportunity i'm wasting grace i'm making the word of god of non-effect let the word of god challenge me he said the spirit entered into me ezekiel 2 from verse 1 and 2 and set me upon my feet the spirit entered when he spake unto me he brought an idea that is superior to that which i have known and it compels change change with results immediately that you can get up and make certain resolutions immediately make certain vows and commitments enter into certain strong personal covenants with god on account of what you have heard the bible says meditate on these things it says give yourself wholly to them it says that you're profiting brothers and sisters ask god how much i pray for you i don't think i pray for you i pray for myself one tenth of the way i pray for you and my prayer is not god give them cars give them houses that's a stupid prayer the prayer is oh god let there be such radical fellowship of the mystery that's what will produce every other thing you know what it means to have fellowship with a mystery that you come into oneness with these mysteries you know them you are persuaded about their reality and they begin to produce remarkable results in your life financial prosperity spiritual growth is never a thing of joy to me i don't know about other preachers but i hate being the only one I know it's supposed to be a wise business strategy but i hate being the only one 
who can produce certain levels of results unlike many preachers it is my joy when i see the grace and the anointing being reproduced in people it gives me great joy so it pains me when after a long time our level of spiritual metamorphosis is slow we must step up this year in the name of jesus christ say amen you see if you don't step up a time will come you will think that what i'm teaching you is a lie because you will be frustrated are we together now you will be frustrated number three the third thing you must expect every time this will even help you to know the kinds of people to invite you must expect revival revival and awakening this is a place a portal in the spirit where people who have been weary spiritually where people who have given up maybe people who used to carry mantles and graces pastors who used to walk with fire churches that used to burn something happened for whatever reason this is the place to come and find restoration that you can say look i don't know what is wrong with me i used to love god i used to be passionate now i don't know what is happening let me go and find out part of the vision god has given us is to make this place a place of refiring a place of revival hallelujah that in in the days of the generals they had places the doors of the churches were open 24 hours there were times it was like they had hosted heaven in that city you didn't even need a pastor if something was wrong with you just go there and lie down we've had a few of those places even in this place many of you do not know some years ago in the campus where used to be long tennis court there were so much spiritual investments in that place it became an open heavens literally that's when you see people carry their results probation they just go and lie down with rechargeable no prayer they are just saying lord kill me here if if it it, it, it was called a court where matters of destiny were settled a sister who no brother is coming to just goes there and say lord i'm here I'm here for you I'm, I'm here for you and i'm telling you mantles that fell upon people this is a preface to what i'm about to share tonight we must restore mantles back to the church we must restore physical portals on earth where men can run to like cities of refuge it's a terrible thing when your spirit is affected and there's no place like a hospital where you can go and be sure imagine if all the hospitals in nigeria go on strike will give birth on the road people will die in cars the moment somebody has an accident we run and you see the confidence of the doctors you are welcome they don't move with hospitals around they station it in a place and you see all kinds of skills to get to the hospital those who trek those on bike they just want to get there because they know if i arrive i'm i don't even know what is wrong with me i think it's headache but let the doctor speak and when certain doctors try and it fails they refer you to certain people who have labored in this medical field they are called specialists they look at you and they say go and lie down we're operating you something is wrong ah doctor what lie down we have seen many of these kind of cases you are not feeling fine Do we have those kinds of spiritual platforms in the body of christ today every city is supposed to have these provisions when a city does not have that provision there is no apostolic authority over their city the hallmark of true apostolic authority is to have a center that represents the place of kingdom activities in a city where the law springs forth and governs the activities of a city Please, i want you to hear what i'm saying you can know that darkness prevails over a city by finding out whether there are apostolic authorities it's not a name it's not a title it's an office they are the gatekeepers 
of the happenings of God in that city. They communicate in partnership with the prophetic when seasons change and they alert the church. When darkness is about to enter that city, they are the eyes that see and stand on behalf of the city. Stop Koinonia for one month and see what will happen in this city. That's when you will know what we represent in the spirit. Never make a mistake that is just the activity of young people. God's idea is that in every city, there must be apostolic authorities. But because of the disalignment of many people, those who have called have, have been called have refused to align. God will have to multiply grace and spread the influence of a territory to take care of others while he raises those who will stand there. This is the concept of multiplication of grace. When people refuse the alignment and the price of the spirit, God will have to come to his servant and say, this was initially not in your curriculum, but to not to frustrate my counsel, I know how uneasy it is for you but i will multiply your grace you see that when i multiply your grace i will stretch your boundaries so that your apostolic coverage like a territory will also enter certain dimensions you will know when an apostolic authority has expanded you will see the influence of that ideology see let me tell you the church in nigeria our order of ministry is wrong because the heads of the church in Nigeria are pastors. I don't mean pastors like Kaito. It was never that design. But there is a sudden restoration. If a pastor ever functions, and a prophet ever functions, and an evangelist ever functions, if they do not do this in affiliation with apostolic authorities, they will get into error. Because you see, the primary of an assignment of the, of the apostolic office is not just teaching, it's kingdom governance. They administrate the distribution of the realities of the spirit committed to that dispensation. And they supervise its safe delivery. Any true apostle of God that you know is a hard person. The word of God is like fire and it has nothing to do with temperament. The grace will alter you to make sure you deliver at that pace. Even if you are a quiet person. They're coming from afar. They're coming from afar. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. If our parents understood this structure, many of them will never be where they are now. They are sincere people but they are victims of the disorganization of the church. So they had nobody to learn and nobody to challenge who was lying to them. Are we together? The church structure was so designed so that anybody can teach anything and claim his 20 years in ministry. When it comes to these matters, it's by the Spirit. No, it's by the Spirit. You don't say, I'm 120 years old and you are teaching nonsense and misleading God's people. Brothers and sisters, the spiritual protocol has been observed for your progress in the spirit. I want you to know this and take advantage of it. We are not in error as to the strategies that will build you. If you don't build, it's a lapse on your own path. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So revival. Oh, may this place remain a place. If you know people who are weary and out, you can just drag them. Somebody tells you, me now, I've done everything you can think about. And you are trying to talk to the person and you just tell the person, I know a place where the river flows from Zion. And I will just come and keep you in that atmosphere. The person may even come late, just like many people outside here. And while they listen, something is happening to them. It's more than the words we speak. 
there is a spirit communication if it were words believe me you'll be tired by now there is a difference between newness and freshness will you open up the gates open up the door will you open up the gates open up the doors mandala kaparadosh Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Sing it from your heart to your maker. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. In your name, we will rise. I don't lie. You reign on high. I don't lie. I don't lie. Yeah. I don't lie. Yeah. You reign on high. Sing in your name. We will rise. Sing Adonai. 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 Just the voices. I don't know. I don't know. Bende kalabasoto putia. Our territory will not fail. We will not misrepresent the kingdom. You reign on high. You reign on high. Sing I don't know. I don't know. Shena na moso na na Maria. Adonai, you reign on high. Please sit down if you can. Be sensitive to what God is doing tonight. Adonai, you reign on high. Adonai. Adonai. the last thing to expect every time you come for koinonia is a demonstration of the power of God it's a doom to any territory where there are no instruments that can bring the supernatural to a people is a doom to any territory when the sick and the helpless cannot have an alternative there must be a spiritual center that represents the might of god in a city there must be a place where men can know that these demons disturbing my life can go we are unapologetic about stamping the gates of hell within our territory in the time of john g lake spokane was said to be the cleanest city hallelujah ew kenyon so many people have received this message without carrying his mantle a truck hit somebody in his church pieces the leg he stood in front of it and the leg started shaking and every bone joined back it was not a strange miracle that was the miracle of ushers. We have lost so much we are not aware. We don't know our spiritual heritage. Pastors don't research. They just get up and preach nonsense. Nonsense! 
and everybody claims he's doing something i don't say this in a cynical way my heart is pain because there are souls that are lean and hungry nothing current in what the spirit is doing we celebrate these things and we justify growth because we can afford to buy suit and we have a nice car to prove that it is working is that how much we love the body we have lost touch with our spiritual heritage we don't know what happened before we came and we have the audacity to believe that we are custodians of the mysteries of god a custodian of a mystery is also a historian one who meticulously studies the dealings of god how did god move in the 50s how did god move in the 60s how did god move in the 80s when revivals died what happened Have you not read of prophets in the Bible who spent their life searching prophecy? They were just searching the connecting prophecy. And when it was time for them to die, they left the curriculum for whoever would take up. Ministry is full time. Full time. Your entire life is spent guiding the people of God. Ministry is not a vocation where you try to get a job and it doesn't work and you say well so that i don't feel like i've wasted my life i just step into the vineyard that's the motivation a lot of people have so they are there and they are thinking that when i start buying a nice shoe and i can afford suit or something or i have a crowd brothers and sisters it's more than that it's more than that it's more than that this place is a place of healing a place of miracles my goodness the number of text messages i get from people and families that are oppressed is scary and overwhelming overwhelming when banks close for public holiday it affects a territory if they close by thursday people cannot wait for monday monday morning everybody is standing and arguing with their atms no matter how much they have in their account because they they miss the bank for three days i'm teaching tonight on the spirit of revival the spirit of true revival night on night you reign on night revelation chapter 3 in your name we will rise i don't know you reign on mine casting crowns lifting hands bowing hearts is what i've come to do Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing heart is what we've come to do. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. I'm a lover of your presence. Jesus. Jesus. See, let me tell you something. By the time Koinonia moves to our next level of life, where we have an auditorium, it services will run every day. Something must be happening spiritually. I, I don't believe in all this coldness then one day people just come around and scramble two hours snoring their destiny and come out and believe they will take no 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 go and ask a habalist if he goes on vacation ask him if he goes on holiday we must make the body of christ an institution these are the principles of strategic kingdom advancement when you are tired that's when somebody is when you are you are charged that's when somebody else is tired there will always be people oh i look forward to those times center for kingdom activities there's a message playing there's worship playing 
there is a place to flog it out activities of angels that's what will happen listen listen we are not a social welfare group we are not we are not contributing to helping government no we are not helping any government we are enforcing something that this thing they are doing is nonsense we are not a part of it we are loyal citizens but this is not our ideology so i'm not i'm not in partnership with any government doing anything we are not social welfare we are bringing the kingdom and its reality into a tent there are there are few territories where you go that you i mean there should be these kinds of places these kinds of places all around that you can step in somewhere right and just pray and see somebody praying with you a christian library books about generals where you go and sit down and study there are dvds playing archives not conferences places to build not branches centers that educate people on what god is doing when we lose touch with history we will die a natural death i'm telling you this hallelujah yeah. your rent has expired nobody is helping you you just know that there is a place where you find comfort you go and see people like you crying to god you are crying ten thousand somebody saying one million say oh lord i find comfort in you a city of refuge do you know why many believers compromise there is no kingdom community that community life of the kingdom is not there there is no place they can retreat to when they have been wounded and beaten by darkness when their faith is stretched there is hardly a place where they can go and find refuge and you try to create those places and see the gate of hell rise they will allow you to do any conference you want but make up your mind to create a physical portal for people all hell will fight it and those people will usually be christians we owe our generation a debt to preserve the heritage of spiritual things there has to be somebody in ancient times they usually are these elders and when israel starts messing up moses and all the people will say okay let me remind you because then some of you were not born how by a mighty outstretched arm he brought us out of egypt right he did this and that and the people are listening and at the end of it the people say ah we repent we will serve the lord satan's plot is to destroy people like us so that there there is there are no more there, there will no longer be voices that can connect people and everybody will start doing anything he wants to do called church we, we must re-examine this thing we have been doing called church because it's not producing the required result i'm telling you oh, may it please the lord to feature us again and again in the moves that he is doing and give us an opportunity to create space for him on the earth because he's pressing to find expression when when anna was mocked by penina where did she run to was it closed she knew where to run to right now let me tell you where we run to every other place is closed only the herbal home the man says i'm, I'm here any day any time just come with your goat and you see a christian dragging a he goat to a a herbal home and we have the mouth to criticize them we have the mouth to call everybody fake there are pastors who call everybody aside from them fake right ask them what contribution they are bringing in building the body let me tell you if i'm sick if i were not born again and i'm sick and dying i will go to any herbalist i don't care anybody that is talking to me are you hear what i'm saying i will not do it in the secret i will do it openly how many people have died in the church who should not die because they will not come and be healed and be delivered because of loyalty to an ideology that somebody told them there are people who are sick today they are dying some of them will come and ring my phone and disturb me to come and meet me in the night 
they will criticize me in the day and call in the night you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing thou fountains of the deep and weep kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth thou spirit of the deep and weep kadosh you are mighty on your throne you are mighty on your throne mighty on your throne mighty on your throne mighty on your throne you are mighty in this place mighty on your throne mighty on your throne mighty on your throne break forth thou fountains of the deep and weep cardinals you are mighty on your Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and we part You are mighty on God must find a place in this city and in this region that can host the full dimension of what he seeks to do we must pay the price of alignment in the spirit for god to find the people listen don't let anybody make you look like a fool for being serious with god what are you doing i'm a pastor no 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 what are you doing for a living look at that stupid statement as though being a man of god is a call to they just look at you as if you, you have your whole life as wasted. Shame on our degree of backsliding. Believe me, I have come with a mantle of revival tonight. My heart pains me when I see this thing. As I travel around regions, I know that men of God are doing their best. But I'm telling you, there's got to be true apostolic voices. It's not a title. It's not a name. It's an election of grace. When will the sick know that they can find a place of refuge? There are people who have come right now. Do you think it's my joy when I see people queuing up, standing? Some wanting to be healed, wanting to be blessed. I can hardly attend to one tenth of people. It is never my intention to be a superstar. The problem is there is a price. It's not a gift. We have been deceived that it's a gift. Let me tell you. I may not boast of knowing so much principles about finances. I may not boast of knowing so much intellectually. But brothers and sisters, when it comes to the presence of God and the mysteries of the kingdom, it's an office. It's not a, it's not a title. It's an office. Paul says, how that by revelation it was revealed to me. This mystery. This mystery. It will usually take us a long time to realize the kinds of vessels and the graces that God puts before us. Spirit of revival. There's too much backsliding in the body of Christ. We don't even know where the reference is again. No reference. Anybody comes up with his idea of what he calls spiritual growth. No reference. You pray a little. People are looking. They are feeling offended for your prayer life. Because they are hoping you backslide. So that it will, it will, it will make them comfortable. Your, your fire is frustrating them because they don't want to grow. And seeing you increase is frustrating them recycling of revelations in the body of Christ because men cannot stay in the secret to pray the price and bring something fresh things are happening over territories we pastors are moving around with deaf ears no seeing eyes no hearing ear please we are going to pray just for one minute 
before I continue are we together you are going to say Lord revive my life revive my life please pray inside and outside pray revive my life this can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it my God is so much bigger than this yeah, this can't be it God is so much bigger than this this can't be it oh don't deceive yourself you know what the standard is in the spirit. You are bigger than this. Yeah, this can be it. My God is so much bigger than this. He's calling us deeper, deeper. Deeper, deeper, he's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. A revival is a season of reawakening a season of reawakening from a state of dormancy a reawakening A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy in the life of a people and a territory. A season of reawakening from a state of dormancy, spiritual inertia, inactivity in the life of a people and a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a season of reawakening in the life of individuals and corporately across a territory usually brought about by an outpouring of the spirit a true revival is a situation where there is an outpouring of the spirit first in the life of individuals and then corporately across a territory and it brings a reawakening an awareness i'm going to be very fast because i want us to pray how do i know that a territory please help me how do i know that a territory is under the influence of a revival thank you there are certain parameters number one the first sign that a territory is under a revival is restoration of love and passion for god corporately not just individually there is a restoration of god consciousness in that territory when there is a territory where there are people who drink anyhow smoke anyhow live anyhow do anything they want to do when they want to do it it may not be their fault but the spiritual envoys in that territory are to be blamed increase god consciousness there have been times through history 
when the anointing of the spirit will fall on individuals and a territory even those who are not born again will be forced to have that consciousness of god when they look at you today and they say where is your phone imagine someone who you ask him um what's your number and he said number that's strange right you look at the person have you been existing in that this our generation imagine a pastor comes to preach and he carries a big um flat screen size computer and then comes to drop it you know something is wrong right because there's a better technology than that that's what happens in a revival people are forced to talk about the move of god the newspapers are forced to carry something do you know that in the days of the generals right the newspapers hardly discussed politics it was in a critical way but they were always talking now we are so idle the newspapers know if they write about us they will not sell so they rather talk about somebody who imported chicken from somewhere and they caught him because people will buy it the moment they say a man of god moves in their not there are all these stupid people they have come again look at how much of a nuisance we have become to society they are irritated when they see our faces upon papers in the times of Evan Roberts, people would lay hands on the magazine. Just lay hands on the newspaper and the spirit of revival will take off. People will start falling under the anointing, repenting by themselves, having visions of Jesus. Restoration of love and passion for God. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out light the fire again i need your discipline i'm crying out light the fire again listen let me tell you how the spirit of the antichrist works in a territory the first thing that happens is satan usually uses the last revival to stop the next one are you seeing that now so the man of god who god did business with in the last revival usually what happens is that because of what is happening there is what we call premature satisfaction little result oh apostle joshua selman you are the talk of the town the, satan takes advantage of that because he knows we like it we like names we like titles we like accolades oh here comes the man of god the one who raises the dead and, and and heals the sick and we we pride ourselves to our detriment we love honor there is an obsession about it we can do anything for it including backsliding so what happens is that people keep watching the devil keeps watching this thing your prayerlessness starts increasing your wordlessness starts increasing but he will never strike he will allow you and then he will throw all kinds of persecutions get my teaching why revivals die you know all those kinds of things together when that person is watered down god no longer has a voice listen there is a difference between god speaking to you in your secret place and god speaking to a territory god has his mouthpieces everywhere and then compromises begin to come in what you would have talked about you no longer talk about let me tell you how satan destroys great men he makes us victims of our messages if satan knows that god has anointed me to liberate people in an area he will do everything within his power to make me a victim of those areas the reason is because when that happens you no longer will have the confidence to preach with might are you seeing why you need discipline love for god love for god your passion your obsession about god when you love god there are indices there must be a restoration of that love some of you sitting down looking at me you know how you were with god tell yourself the truth ah don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. 
Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. You see, if you love God because of husband, the day the husband comes, there's no more pursuit to love God. You see why we teach? Look, you know, I teach you a balanced teaching here. When you tie your love for God to things, as a bride, you are in for a shock. I can love God because of anointing. I hope you know that. And that anointing can lead me to go and fast because I want power. The day the power comes and I can have one or two results, I now know that the anointing has come. Are we together now? So no matter what I... You don't know my secret place. Is it not when I come out here? It's only God that knows whether I'm serious over what I'm saying or not. You cannot ordinarily tell whether a man of God is serious with God or not. Because you see, God is so merciful. He will always confirm his word in the midst of the people. And it usually is a justification to men of God to mean they are intact. Be careful. That God is still using you and the power of God is still flowing does not mean that he's accrediting everything you are doing. You must go back to the secret place for editing and fine-tuning. Love for God. I am shocked to see how fast people lose their love for God. Lord, if you do this for me, I will come and testify. And then the other part of the story, we don't say it out, but it's in our heart. If you don't do it, I will hate you. So, it doesn't seem to happen. Oh God, no husband again. Am I the worst sinner on earth? And, and you hear all those kinds of statements. How can you tie your love for God for these kinds of things? Success can distract men. Please hear this. There are many teachings on success that I will bring this year. But let me tell you, success can distract more than failure. In fact, failure gives you focus because your ego is already strong. But success can distract. Whenever you begin to see your candle rise, brothers and sisters, that's when to catch God. That's not when to leave him and say, everybody behold the celebrity. You will die like a chicken. When Satan wants to throw you, he allows you to rise high enough for everybody to see you. He throws you in a way that threatens everybody so they don't try to rise like you again. Because the memory of your fall stops them from pressing it. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why certain people will not be serious with God and the devil will not touch them until they rise high before everybody. And then something will happen and crash them down. Love for God. This night, we are addressing our love for God. Lovest thou me more than this. One of the first indices of a true revival. We can look at Zaria as a city and Samaru as a region and know whether the spirit of revival is in this city. We can look at ABU as a campus and know whether our love for God has diminished. When somebody, let me not go ahead of myself. Number two, marks characteristics of a true revival. Number two, the outpouring of the true spirit of holiness over a territory and outpouring. Brothers and sisters, may God never make our territories without men who can speak the truth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil is out to frustrate men of God and water down people who can speak the truth. Please, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, if you are a Christian, many things must change in your life. Your lifestyle must change. Your conversation must change. Not by the energy of the flesh. There is an alignment. Your job is to do that alignment. If you do it well, the transformation must happen. There's too much nonsense and carelessness in the body of Christ. To a point that somebody will have to say, I'm a Christian. For it, oh, you're a Christian, so you're a brother in the faith. That's a serious issue. Are we here? You, you see a Christian sit somewhere and he's talking. My goodness, you are embarrassed. Until you start talking about koinonia, for instance, and you say, ah, koinonia, you know, apostle, ah, you don't used to see me. You say, you mean you are there? In Antioch, it was unbelievers who called people who were a reproduction of Christ. They called them Christians. Who is calling you a Christian? 
can those who hate you say i hate this person no but i know he's a christian can't be drinking and smoking and say it's just my body that is drinking my spirit is okay you are not all right please let's let's end this you are not all right let me tell you the truth no you are not all right you are watching porn see you see let me tell you something i'm not condemning you don't get me wrong the difference between a christian and an unbeliever is the presence of the convicting power of the spirit when when you are sinning unconvicted you are not in christ are you getting what i'm saying now yeah if by the work of the flesh somebody falls into a habit you went to your friends they reminded you of Gulda that you used to take you don't know what happened you gave into the flesh that conviction is a sign that you are in christ that you can return and the Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. It says, and the truth is not in us. He said, but if we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. If we confess our sins, not assume they are not there. He says, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have you turned that out of your Bible? Because it's supposed to be there. The true spirit of holiness. Please. I speak especially to the young people all of us who are young people in this region let's not make it look like being a young person is a stupid thing are we together some people were discussing me somewhere and uh, I got to hear of course and one of the ladies said, ah, this person you mean there are all these beautiful girls in Koinonia how is he doing let me tell you how I'm doing I'm very fine very fine very fine healthy in the spirit very fine i intend to continue with god for a long time i decided that from the start of the journey we are afraid of the responsibility that firm decision brings because we know it will have to force us we still want to enjoy some things you see that because if you make a firm decision you too you know you know a firm decision means deleting that person's phone number but you don't want to so you are not serious that's the meaning it's as simple as that because you leave jesus i leave i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you leave jesus I live today, I live to pray. A true spirit of revival that you can see somebody kept his money and leave it there. When the old man wants to touch it, he reminds you that it has been nailed to the cross. And you mind your business and leave that money there. Even though you needed money to eat. The spirit of holiness. Let me tell you. If we allow the spirit of holiness to leave our territory, we will never experience the fullness of God. We will not see miracles and signs and wonders. Please, let's not mock God. I know what I'm saying is hard, but you too, you know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. Don't let the spirit of holiness just run out of your life. And the key to unholiness is carelessness. Bros, you day, there's one party we're having. Say, yeah, but I don't drink against it. Just come, Jerry. Carelessness. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. Lot settled near Sodom. You take advantage of the grace of God and produce a life that is worthy. Please don't feel condemned. I speak to all of us here, those who are here and those who are following us. The goal is not to condemn you, but the goal is to create conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holiness and power go hand in hand. Don't ever deceive yourself that you can compromise on holiness and experience the power of God. You can kneel down with offering and lift it to a man of God. There has to be true holiness. There has to be true holiness. 
I'd like you to lay hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, restore to my life the spirit of holiness. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Especially if you know you are affected by what I'm saying, please pray. This is a threshing floor. It's a family. Please lay your hands and say, Lord, I've been pretending as if this is not an issue. But tonight, you have brought your word out of love. Not to condemn me, but to remind me that you are still waiting. I receive a baptism of the spirit of holiness. Those outside, please make sure you are laying your hand. Oh, I separate myself by grace from the works of the flesh. The impulses of the flesh. The appetites of the flesh. The appetite. The lust and the carnality that destroy great men. Lord, I'm going far. The spirit of holiness must come upon my life. It must come upon my life. I receive a restoration. Lord, I used to have it. But something happened. I gave in to women. I gave in to men. I gave in to drinking. I gave in to wrong relationships. I was lonely. And I allowed. I, I frustrated the manifestation. But tonight, oh God, in this place. I receive grace. 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 It's not by the strength of the flesh. You can't resist evil by the strength of the flesh. Remember the cross, the place where grace comes from. Your old man has been nailed, therefore mortify your body. Take advantage of that grace. Let it become an instrument of righteousness. Please pray. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. God is not a native doctor. Godliness. True holiness. That's why many of our fathers have lost touch with spiritual reality. Help us, O oh God. That in lifestyle, in character, in conversation, that everything about your life, there is a presence of holiness you will carry on your job, in school, in your atmosphere not by condemning others not by reading people off that's the flesh you won't glorify God that way but that you carry a compelling presence hallelujah before we continue pray again say Lord I overcome carelessness in my life some of us are already at the verge God is bringing this as a prophetic message because some of us are already dwindling. Visiting the guy carelessly. Doing all kinds of things carelessly. You are a Christian. God is bringing this message to salvage you. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. Get back to order. The true spirit of holiness. No, you can't start accepting bribe. Not at this level of your life. You used to hate it before. Don't all of a sudden love bribe. You are a Christian and a Christian indeed. The spirit of God in you and the righteousness of God compels you to hate immorality. Not out of fear, but because of your love for God and your desire to be used by him. Make sure it doesn't leave. That's a fire you must not allow to die. Aside from immorality and the rest, what of vain glory? What of self-seeking? What of vanity, ambitions that are not consistent with Christ? Please pray. This is a threshing floor tonight. Those of us outside, make sure you are praying. If nobody has told you there is a problem with your life, I'm telling you there is. If you are giving room to the flesh I don't care what excuse you bring God does not condemn but he does not condone evil many of us have been praying Lord I want you to use me I want to see your power I'm showing you the secret it overrides fasting and prayer 
Hallelujah. Let's hurry up. Number three. The third sign to know that there is a true revival in a place. The third sign is massive salvation of souls. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. Genuine salvation. It's not enough for people to come and be saved. They must be saved well. Well to stay well and grow. Massive salvation. That is engineered by those who are custodians of that revival. Listen, if there is no true passion for souls in your heart, something is wrong. Let me prove to you that it's unnatural. How many of you have seen a scene where there is an accident? nobody asks who is a christian there or who is a muslim everybody rushes because they want to save them from dying every time you see sinners i want you to imagine an accident scene imagine a fatal accident what would you do there are some of us we have roommates we have people in our workplaces it's until maybe three months to leave zaria that they stumble across koinonia and they come and find you there and you see them crying and say this is what you have been enjoying say i'm too fine how can i tell this guy to come how can i lead him to christ massive salvation by the way the lord while i was preparing this the lord gave me an instruction i'll say during the announcement but then let me say it again by God's grace, next Friday's miracle service, you are coming with two sets of requests. The first is the names of your family members and loved ones, those who you have tried to get them born again. Come and watch God will do for them this year. You will watch what God will do. He will surprise you. I, 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 please, you are permitted to write a full scrap sheet of names if you have it. Write it down. Write no matter. I don't care who they are. Don't you let the devil tell you God cannot save any man. If he saved you, he can save any man. Even Pharaoh, although he didn't repent, but he acknowledged that there was God. Ne ne Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged God turned him into an animal. Leave the how to God. God knows where to touch them and force them to come to Christ. When Saul landed on the floor, he knew that this was God. See, God knows where to touch the arrogance of any man. Are we together? so you're going to bring one prayer request your normal prayer request and that of your loved ones but please write it down not names of enemies and that's not what i'm asking you names of sinners sinners people who you know you are agreeing with god let me tell you one key to seeing the hand of god on your life be passionate about where his heart is are we together if i'm a millionaire and you want to get my attention won't you look for what interests me and also be passionate because that will be the meeting point are we together we want to call god's attention but we are not facing where his heart is facing it's not enough to pray and fast you must be serious about sinners there are some of us when we make altar calls here you now look at time and say okay, let's hurry up to you it's not a big deal you've forgotten that he saved you You've forgotten that that person he's saving now may be the first in a family of 10 to be born again. I remember one of our ladies who years ago, they were all unbelievers, you know, non-Christians now I mean. And God, I mean, saved her. She became saved, I think, while on campus. And we kept praying like this in the initial days when we used to start our meetings. God touched her brother. I think God touched her mother. Three of them were all saved, remaining the father. The father was a hardened. He wasn't somebody who was near the kingdom. We told her, keep praying. Just don't say God will not touch them. Keep praying. One day, she received a call. He was saved in living faith. When he was saved, I was told reliably that they took money at the back of the boot of a car. He's, I don't know, it's like his family members. They drove down and said, which depression are you in that would have made you to become a Christian? Ah, you will see salvations that will scare you. The day you go and look at somebody in your family, you will think it's a mistake. You will just yeah, you say, what are you doing? Say, I'm praying in tongues. Say, are you joking? Say, I, I, I'm a sanctuary keeper. 
I'm, I'm, I've, I've left the world since. I used to have a bad colleague years ago. One time, I heard that he was a pastor in Salem ministry. I said, it's a lie. So one day, he called me. And we were talking. We just spoke. And he said, I said, tell me it's a joke. Tell me it's a joke. These guys were the fence jumpers. These guys were the ones they carry in the gutter in the morning. And now he has been changed. Please don't conclude on any man. Don't conclude on any man. That roommate you are seeing, you know every Friday she's not around till Monday morning. Wait and see what God does with her. The reason why we don't evangelize is because we don't believe God can touch people. There's nobody on earth today that God cannot save. There is hope for the living. There is hope for the living. Is God helping us? Please, we are going to see massive salvation. Make sure you don't allow people without. You can give them koinonia messages. You can pray for them. If you don't have the courage, drag them and bring them to koinonia. Just like many people as I'm talking now, there are many people who will respond to the altar call right now. They came because they were invited. When you love souls, you can pay for them to come. If 50 naira is too much for you to pay transport for someone to come and get born again, don't say you love God. Don't say you love God. When a guy loves a lady, he can have 5,000 in his account. He will withdraw it. Leave the minimum balance. And tell her eat. She say, I don't want to stress your body. Say, no, no, no. Don't eat. It's me that is paying for this thing. But when it comes to souls, we are afraid. Well, someone is telling you, I, I would love God, but he's giving flimsy excuses. Why don't you tell the person, two of us, let's climb bike and come. Are you that passionate and unembarrassed? Do that and see the way God wipes your tears. See, these are kingdom keys. There are no shortcuts to this thing. Souls. When I pray many times, I say, oh God, use koinonia as a platform to save sinners. You see my heart when we make altar calls and people are coming. I tell you, give them chance to come. I remember somebody... Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly I think he was he's, he's an imam or something one of these, these uh, very strong guys he was seated outside when I was teaching the reality of heaven and hell this was somebody who is learned you understand what I'm saying and he sat down outside and was thinking and while I was teaching he saw a vision of Jesus outside and he got born again the day he came for counseling I could not believe it ushers I think one or two people there's one of our brothers in ushers too who was like that now totally transformed, serving the Lord, working in the ocean department. Who told you God cannot save them? Your stubborn father, your stubborn mother, your missing brother who comes back once in three months. I'm telling you when the power of God lands on them. We don't know the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's why. Because all we are teaching about in church is money. We don't know the power. If a power can raise a dead body, is it to transform one who is alive that it will not change him? number four let's run the fourth mark or characteristic of a true revival is passion for the house of god now please hear me i say this sincerely from the depth of my heart and i, I mean no condemnation with this but when as men of god we celebrate small ministries and small churches to mean no, I'm like that. Me, God gave me this. I don't believe in that concept. I know that crowd is not the ultimate determinant as to whether God is there. But brothers and sisters, people must be saved. And they must have passion for the house of God. Because that's when they are taught the precepts of the kingdom. The church is God's portal to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. It's not enough for people to be born again. That's why we, co we collect their details. We send them text messages and follow them up. What's wrong with getting people born again and get their numbers? Once in a while, you send them a scripture. Maybe the person is about to go back to alcohol and ah, the text comes and you say, maybe it's a scripture. Love not the world. Looks at your phone. Looks at that bottle. And he knows. And the spirit of God, you have given him access to kick in. And he drops it never to pick it again. 
there's no support structure in the body of Christ to help sinners stand. Once they are born again, we say, okay, now just find your way back to your seat and the Lord help you. That's why when people get born again, we recommend to them. Because the ministry is still growing, we don't have all the avenues to do all the things we want to do. Right? We recommend them to go to the prayer department. At least for one month. Even if they don't intend to be members. Just to join. That's the only other large platform we have to minister to the people. That's why pray for us. Pray for this ministry that God will take us to the next level fast. And you will see the things that are in store for the body of Christ. Passion for the house of God. When coming to the house of God. Hear me. Let me use Koinonia. This is our platform. When coming to Koinonia suddenly becomes an endurance. Please, I want you to know that something is already wrong with your spiritual life. Are we together now? Yeah. You just sit down and say, Kai, this thing self to six. I will even sit down outside. It's like, it's cold, Abi. Those things are indices. It's a reaction to something already happening in your spirit. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The, the scripture, the anchor scripture that the Lord gave us. Remember the scripture. It says, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted and all nations shall flow. They will say to themselves, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, to the mount of God. For there he will teach us his ways. He said, for out of Zion shall proceed the Lord. Passion. Passion. There are people, you see them, January, Koinonia, and then later on, Maybe when result is out or something, it just coincides with a miracle service. They now drag themselves and come and sit outside. And of all the prophecies that are coming, they are just waiting for when they talk about academics. The moment they say, for your academics, they, now, they are now invited. Immediately they finish, they run. That game you are playing with God, you will not win. Praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Any ministry that is truly committed in soul winning will not be small. What we are doing in the church is sheep stealing. What did I call it? Sheep stealing. When you steal a sheep, a sheep is not a fool. It grew somewhere. Eventually, ah, you see, I am the good shepherd. My sheep hear, know my voice. And we, we steal sheep. We are, we are trying to steal choices, quality sheep. So if Sam, please stand up, Sam. If Sam is a millionaire, I want that kind of sheep around because I know the relevance of the sheep to that pasture or that place, that attitude. Every time we see unbelievers, you see somebody with his draggy jeans, you know this guy, you even need to support him back. We don't like those kind of souls. The person calls you daddy, say, who is your, I'm not your father, I don't know you. I just got you born again, please look for somebody else. These are the kinds of, ah, this is my son, you are, I'm well pleased. That carnal attitude, are you getting what I'm saying? So, when, if that's why I say it to the glory of God, and you know here, I know no man after the flesh. I will not go to anybody's house and say, um, you are a senator, uh, your daughter is a member in our ministry, we, we, have, we, we want to buy a bus. God will use people. There is nobody that I will reject on grounds of anything. Whether your father is a carpenter or a pilot, it doesn't matter. Hallelujah. We don't love the sheep and they know they know when, they know the type of sheep we love. When you see a beautiful lady, say you are you are my daughter. Daughter, how are you? And you keep stressing that lady even when she leaves your ministry. She's wondering, what do you like? Me or the beauty? See, members are not idiots. They know pastors who are serious. They know. They know pastors who are playing games. You just gather phone numbers of very pretty ladies. These are this is what we do that destroy us. Are we together now? Or we gather the number of people who are rich and all of that. And oh no, there is a place for honor. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying, this thing we are doing is too much. It's sheep stealing. How many of us are willing to labor on sinners until they become true saints? 
the bible says the kingdom of god is like a, a remember the story of a shepherd right 99 sheep one got missing what did he do to the 99 they were all right so he left them and went still not minding if he loses the 99 went to look for that one is that our attitude when somebody comes to stand you are looking whether he's holding an envelope if it's not you look at his shoe look at his watch and say let's pray father help this person and you are praying don't waste my time here but when somebody comes package you are like what are they what let me let me know the needs if you're a pastor here please do this thing truly god is going to judge us not in a condemning way we are going to be accountable for this act as if there is an authority above you members know let me tell you there is no member who will see a man of god talking like i'm talking who will not love him and be open to him do you know why many of our members in different churches i'm speaking apostolically there are many people listening do you know why many members they know their pastors don't like them they know it they can't truly call this person my pastor my father somebody i can come and talk to because they know that the pastors want money they want what will make them proud by god's grace we don't destroy our wounded soldiers here no matter what you have done we enter the hole with you and come out together a good shepherd doesn't stand on his sheep and leaves a trophy he lays down his life for his sheep passion for the house of god number five quickly passion for the word indices that measure a revival in a place passion for the word passion for prayer passion for a life of worship you can know whether a territory is under the influence of the spirit of revival by how much people hunger for the word jordan bookstore is there he will tell you i know that people love the word in this place I'm even careful to announce certain books because you announce it by tomorrow there are people who are already there getting books studying buying concordance truly let me tell you i'm shocked at people's low level of passion for the word of god when i started out with god sometimes you will come and see different kinds of bibles our money was spent buying bible not just to look for rema we didn't have the privilege to learn greek and hebrew so you listen we buy bible on tape bombard it put it in your ears i had one rechargeable then all kinds of songs all kinds of songs in the night you play it but right now what do we do with our money we don't do anything for the kingdom you buy one small bible that looks like a phone you just carry you cannot even see what is there and you don't care because you don't read it you don't read it obviously you don't read it please let's take this thing of god seriously when do you close yourself and study not just devotional where you read fast as you are praying you're on your way going oh i see this uh, god and then scripture for reading luke chapter this rejoice in the lord always again i say rejoice amen you just drop it and run ask the person what he's running towards he will tell you he's looking for money or a meaningful life and we have left the word of life I found your word and I did eat them. And they were a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Passion for the world. Passion for worship. Many of us don't worship. We pray and we study the word. There is a place for worship in your spiritual growth. If you don't have worship tapes. Now, technology has made it easy. Put these things. I have a selection in my phone. I call them deep worship there's one called encounter that one when when i'm high in the spirit i just switch not all songs minister to me at the same level i have studied what the anointing does and the songs that help them has it happened to you like that yeah you put the songs don't just say christian songs and then uh, uh, motivational songs no 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 separate this thing and take god seriously you have a selection the moment you just hear a christian one there is another one diluting your spirit and then midway after you enjoy it small just to satisfy the guilt you now quickly run to don Muen. don't please saints of god i admonish you in the name of jesus christ guard your heart with all diligence your destiny depends on it 
you will never find one on Christian song in my phone. I'm not one of those people who say, look, we need to work with technology. I'm not a fool. Technology has failed us. Many things, governments have failed us. It's obvious they are ignorant. We used to say it before, but there was no room to expose it right now. It's clear that the government of nations are clueless. Come to the kingdom and learn the ways of God. The years to come will show the excellency of the wisdom of the spirit. We are like the virgins that are taking extra oil now. A time will come when those who had that oil, they will not have anything again. Satan does not give anything free. Have you not learned? A day will come. The day he meets all the people celebrating him, they will pay with their life. Satan never gives you a thing free. He will give you, you will think he's dash, but his business. He will come in the future for everything. Anybody that serves the devil knows that it's a fraternity unto death. The end is death. Create an atmosphere of worship. Create an atmosphere of the word. Get Bible. I have, I have a, a very beautiful software that I got. Just the words of Jesus. They just pick them through the gospels. Just everywhere Jesus spoke. Just the words of Jesus. Always beautiful. With worship playing in the background like this. I tell you, you will wash your spirit. You know how you work. When you listen, you will know you are getting clean through the word. The word cleanses. Cleanses your mind. Sometimes I sleep and let it keep playing. And I have visions and encounters. You wake up shaking under the presence of God. You create an atmosphere that cannot be denied. This is how it happens. What if I have roommates that are not serious? That's why you have a phone. You cry to God for a good phone. He gave it to you. Use it well. Use it well. Not just for sending text messages. Use it well. How much does it take to download? I mean, there are Android devices with one, two thousand naira. Don't say I cannot afford it. Your hair, your shoulder, your knees, your toes. Look at all you have used your money that God gave you for building your spirit to just build your body alone. Remember, your spirit is better than your body. Invest in it first. Number, let's hurry up, we're almost done. When there is a true revival in a place, there is an outburst of financial miracles and sociological advancement. Listen, revival affects the quality of the living of the people with India. Don't think when you subscribe to the things of God and a revival comes, um, it means that other areas of your life will suffer. No, when there is a real revival, the quality of the life of God's people is improved. Almost every major technological advancement is connected to a revival. It's just that the historians remove the God factor out and make it look like somebody just discovered something. A lot of the people who made strange discoveries, they did them coinciding with periods of revival. And most of those people were either Christians or came from Christian families. When the spirit of revival is upon you, you will be rich. You will be blessed. Because the presence of God will compel favor upon your life. When a ministry is under that kind of open heavens, they will enjoy supplies. People will do well. People will get jobs. There will be marriages. There will be blessings. There will be children. There will be all kinds of breakthroughs. Don't make it look as if when you seek God, you will be in trouble. No. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, 33 tells us. He said, and his righteousness, if you do that properly, he says, all other things shall be added to you as well. Amen. Seven. When there is the true spirit of revival in a place, there is an outburst of miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, this is very important. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. Miracles. I believe in miracles. Believe me. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in miracles. I believe the sick can be healed. I believe God can step into people's lives and change their stories. We've seen all kinds of testimonies 
in this place. That's what is going to happen to many of you this night. Koinonia remains a place of healing, a place of miracles. Because of people's inability to contend for the true healing power. They say, look, um, um, healing. When they say healing, they are quick to say, no, no, no. Emotional healing, please. Physical healing. People are sick. Their bodies are sick. Are we together now? Yes, there's a place for emotional healing. But we usually say those things because there's no physical index to prove whether they are healed or not. If somebody is blind and is healed, he is healed. Is that not true? We must contend for grace even in this dimension. Say amen. And may it happen through your hands. There is a joy when God uses you. There is a joy when God does things around you. But when it happens through your hands, it's a blessing. I trust that God will use us to begin to lay hands on the sick and speak to people. That they note you and say, Ah, I, I came to Amaka and she prayed with me and doors just opened. Great testimony. Ella agreed with me. She prophesied something over my life. Oh, I met Aaron crying on something and he spoke over my life. Some of us are so backward in the area of the miraculous. Even if somebody said you prayed with me and something happened, say no, it's because you came for koinonia. You must believe God in your life. Hallelujah. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Any pastor in this day and age who is not serious about the miraculous should be prepared for empty pews. I guarantee you. Any pastor who is not ready for the demonstration of the miraculous people are not looking if they are looking for where to watch film there's silver bed there are many there's cinema and all kinds of places people don't come to church to watch movies they come to church because they have real problems is that not true they need the power of god head on in their lives lastly the final index that shows that their atmosphere is under the influence of revival is impartation of gifts, graces, and mantles. Impartations. See, revivals are times where God recruits people into his army. Most people stepped into the call of God upon their life at revivals. When people are just praying non-stop for a while, the Holy Ghost separate me Paul and Barnabas there has to be release of mantles graces impartations it happens during revivals there will be almost no impartations when revival is not in a place remember a man in the Bible called Agabus he had daughters and all of them were prophets there are few people who have carried those kinds of mantles that can come from father to children God knows my children. God knows. Before they arrive, there will be a special recording waiting for them. As soon as they arrive, straight on. Before the nonsense that society brings. This and that. You are stupid. You are foolish. No. They will receive something. They will start having visions and encounters of Jesus. That's why I respect and I want us to appreciate them. I respect every parent in this place who come with their babies and their children. Let them sleep and sleep in the presence of God. It was in the presence of God Samuel was sleeping when he had the voice of God. Even if you must sleep, do it in the presence of God. Because although your body is sleeping, your spirit is receiving. Impartations of mantles and graces. That's what is happening to some of you. Some of you in the nearest future, God will send you to territories and you'll be the ones doing this thing I'm doing right now. When you stand one day you will just stop in the middle of the congregation and tears will come down and you will tell them once upon a time i sat down quietly i remember when i used to go for meetings and sit down and i hear the man of god say out of this place god will raise great men and people are shouting amen some are sleeping some are playing some are not serious and i just sit down there and i say really i could imagine the angels and all these people saying young man pay attention there are destinies tied to you very quickly what is the price what is the requirement for revival and we're going to pray I'll just give you four of them quickly and then we're done sorry I may not have time to read the scriptures is God blessing you tonight 
the first price requirement for true revival not assumed revival true revival is consecration the first price you want to host the glory of God the first requirement is consecration media help us with one scripture that I found very interesting Isaiah 52 verse 11 I'll, I'll just read the other ones while they pull up that one for us 2 Timothy 2 verse 19 to 21 says nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure it says having this seal the Lord knoweth them that are his he says, and let every man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Iniquity is not just sin, fornication and the rest. No, it's a state of your heart that produces those workings of the flesh. Let's read this scripture together. One, two, read. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. It says, go ye out from the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. Those that host precious things from God. He says, depart. Depart ye. Consecration. Consecration. Very, very important. Set apart for his service. Set apart. The Bible says, there is no man who warreth and tangles himself. We want to be civilians and soldiers at the same time. It doesn't happen. No. Consecration. Consecration is understood when you look at monks and sisters in a convent. You know that, that dedication. They have decided that they are not going to get married for the purpose of their service to the kingdom. You must dedicate your whole life. Some of us have given God half of our lives. Some of us gave God everywhere, excluding your head and your thinking. Some of us gave God everything. No, no, no. You have to give him everything. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty, O morning star, you truly are. Number two, the second prize is hunger and thirst. You want to see revival in your life, there must be a hunger for it. Isaiah 44 verse 3 and Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. I'm giving this to us very quickly because of time. He will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Him that is what? There must be a thirst. I will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring. Do you have that hunger? I'm telling you, I have an insatiable hunger to see revival in my life. I want to see the revival power of God in my life. That everywhere I go to regions to minister, I leave a deposit of the spirit of revival in that place. Hunger and thirst. Psalm 63 verse 1 and 2. He says, Oh Lord, you are my God. Early will I seek you. He say, My soul pants after you. Right? In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. Do you have that hunger and thirst to see revival in your life? It was men like John Knox that prayed and said, Lord, give me Scotland or I die. We quote it and have no passion at all. Number three. The price for revival. Prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fasting. Prolonged seasons. You don't pray for one week and see revival. There are women who prayed for their children for 20 years non-stop. Before the fire of God fell on them. Prolonged seasons. 
that's why it's important to be consistent in your prayer life and please i talk to everybody here inside and outside if your prayer life has nos died we welcome you to join the prayer department on tuesdays even if it is for one week there is fire burning in that place i tell you join and refire yourself prolonged seasons of intense prayer with fastings listen fasting is a powerful spiritual principle you don't do it out of religion or out of fear however it it energizes your spirit and promotes you to have faith in god really unbelief is what it challenges so that the conviction about the reality of god is crystallized in your heart Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 it was while they were in the upper room praying that the Holy Ghost fell Acts 13 verse 2 it was while they worshipped and prayed and ministered unto the Lord with fasting the Bible spoke I mean God spoke to them and said separate unto me Paul and Barnabas number 4 the price for the word of God intense study of the word with a view to living by it not just for head knowledge not like the people the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth intense study of the word of god finally the last price for revival is the sacrifice of time the sacrifice of time you want to see God's might in your life, you must give him time. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you. You are not going to rush God and see his glory. The proof of passion is the investment of time. Anything you love, you have time for it. Please give God time. Remember I told us last week, you must give God time. Don't give God one hour. Don't give God two hours. There are times where you have to dedicate a whole day. And just say lord this is for you a time of worship and prayer let his presence host you that day you are dedicating it just for watching movies that will build your life bible stories watching messages listening to teachings worship prayer you must even be fasting you can just focus this day is on to you imagine if someone walked up to you and said i'm dedicating my tomorrow for you no matter how antisocial you are even if you say no thank you you will be happy that somebody can sacrifice his day when you come to somebody and he tells you look i don't have time i'm busy sometimes you feel bad you feel that ah, this person doesn't value me so much that's what happens when we come to god and just worship God, are you aware that I have problems? Okay, I'm aware. Do something about them. I'm on my way. Lord, I give you time. My life is measured in time. And if I give God my life, he must be Lord of my time too. He's Lord of my time. At this level of your life, the time you are spending visiting people and, and gossiping, they are tired of you. Why don't you come to the one who is not tired of you? They don't just have the courage to tell you. They are really tired of you. You are going every time, eating, disturbing, bringing stories that are unnecessary. At a point, you now lie on it because you have to keep moving. Why, I mean, why don't you come to somebody who, he never says change to come. He says, my presence will change you. Come. Come. I give God time. Anyone who knows me, knows that i give god time check the amount of time you give to god now of course if you are working you don't have all the time you can't get up doing your job and just shut down that day no no no, no. 
there are times there are weekends there are holidays there are special times you can just say lord you know that it's my desire to spend this much time with you but now that i've had this opportunity i run to you i run to you we don't know what happens in the presence of god when we give him time when the glory of god comes into your life he brings beauty beauty and glory your life will remain a wonder to people if you can be planted by that riverside that riverside hallelujah everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen Shall be restored unto you. Things never get missing. They only leave you. They are still on earth. Everything that leaves a man does not go out of the earth realm. It is only within a distance that is beyond your reach. There is a force from heaven that sustains an ability to call the things that be not and draw them. There is a force of attraction. I prophesied as I was commanded. It says, and the bones, they were all there. Just because you cannot see them does not mean they are not there. Everything you are looking for is looking for you too. And there is a force that can connect you to them. Please listen, I'm not just motivating you. The things that we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled, That who is he that saith the thing and it comes to pass? That God did not vet it and approve it? Let God be true. And let every man, including your situation, be a liar. Listen to me. Please hear me. A miracle service is not just the time to pray for the sick. Not everybody is sick. You see the level of high blood pressure disturbing young people now? You see people talking like fools on the road. Someone in early 20s talking to himself, moving around. This our road from here to Abuja, almost every day someone is dying. Nobody leaves his house to die. Worry. Pastors collapse on stage. I've told you that there is a technology that sends Israel to Egypt. It's called hunger. Every time there is hunger, Israel must go to Egypt to find bread. Genesis 42. Please give it to us. Let's just read it. I apologize. The projection is not very clear. But just see that scripture. Now, everyone read. If you can see it. We're reading 1 and 2. Ready? Read. Now, when Jacob saw that there was what? Corn. Where? In Egypt. Jacob said unto his sons, why do ye look upon one another? Verse 2. And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy for us from thence that we may live and not die. This is a prophet. But lack of corn was making him mortgage his children. Go to Egypt. I'm a prophet, but we're about to die. And I hear that wherever there is corn, that's where people go to. Look, let's not lie to ourselves. Wherever there is corn, that is where people go to, including a prophet. He had, because the Bible says the increase of the earth is for all, and that even the king is fed from it. When there is corn in Egypt, believers will have to go down there. We need time to serve the Lord. We need time to bear the revival that he wants to bring. We need time to pursue the purposes of the kingdom. But that time cannot be given to you when you spend your life looking for corn in Egypt. It's a cost to go down to Egypt. But if that is the only place that has corn, then you will have to go down to eat. And then there arose another Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. And the people of God got into servitude and slavery. Don't mind the ignorant people who say it doesn't matter. You just serve God like that. According as his divine power 
hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Everyone say after me, life, godliness. Life, godliness. There are things that pertain unto godliness. Your character, your work with God, your prayer life, your spiritual development. Those are things that pertain unto godliness. But there are things that pertain unto life. Your children's school fees, your accommodation, the well-being. That any man who is unable to cater for his family, according to scripture, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So when the devil wants to discourage you as a man of God, you're preparing a sermon and here comes your son with a PTA letter. And your eyes, the letter is usually typed, except where the money will be. They write it with biro and the price is doubled. You stand there wanting to kill your son. Why has the school fees been doubled? And the child said, they just gave me to give you. And you look at it. Your salary is not increased. Nothing else is increased. But the bills are rising. The devil wants to send you to Egypt. A time will come what, what you would not do yesterday, you will now do tomorrow on the strength of the pay. Hunger can take men to Egypt. Hallelujah. A dear man of God called me, I think two weeks or so. I don't know him so much. And from one of these nations. And he called me and was lamenting. He said, Apostle, pray for me. Our ministry is under serious financial attack. He said, right now, honestly, the way things are, we may not even be able to hold our service because the bills, you know, things are going down economically and the givings of the people also seem to have followed and you know i got angry in my spirit i said this is the kind of new satan wants because you see very soon the devil will bring one rich man who will pocket that ministry because of one million or one five or ten million or whatever it is that he gives you will lose your voice lose your relevance lose your integrity on the platter of hunger was it not hunger that made Esau to sell his birthright? Only an irresponsible ministry will not address the issue of hunger that is going on. There are many things to address, but hunger should be one of them. Believers are hungry. They need a technology that is higher than what has been proposed. Let me tell you, there is a part which no fowl knoweth. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are dimensions reserved for these times when God will bring out as a display of his intelligence. Do you not know that the strategy of saving 20% was God's intelligence? It's not just an economic strategy. There is always a reservoir in God's intelligence. For times when people cry, when the saints cry, God will say, show them that the wisdom of God is inexhaustible. Healthcare is one of the devourers in our world today. Do you know how much it takes to treat people? Once your son is sick, you are crying already because you know. How much does it take? We have so many doctors here. One of our doctors came and I asked him to check a woman. And when he brought the list for the x-ray, I said, I will buy that machine. No. As, as I do, <laughs> and open an x-ray, an x-ray place. I mean, how much? Not the whole body. I don't know what part of the body it was. But when I saw the bills, I said for x-ray. And almost every day, someone has to go there. If you are collecting 50,000 naira and you use 30,000 for x-ray, there is no reason why that child will give you joy. Are we together? Anything that child does will annoy you. And then help that child. Let him not take first or second or third. You will almost kill the child. There are real issues that we cannot laugh at. Real issues. And this night, God is determined to rise up and not only step in, but turn things around. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Thank you. John chapter 10 and verse 10, please. It says, the thief cometh not. There is a name Satan is called. And here he is called the thief. Are we together? If someone knocks your gate and you say, who is that? He said, the thief. You don't need to ask him what tribe, what gender, 
you will call the police immediately and say there is a thief there is an armed robber in front of my house and jesus is speaking here and he says the thief cometh not that means you will never see him around but for to steal and to kill and to destroy so everywhere you see stealing killing and destruction is a signature the thief satan he comes into a joyful family are we together happy husband come my dear happy wife when the thief comes in between them he must scatter everything one flimsy excuse or the other he will come in between business partners and shred them when satan passes a place you know this is him he will leave his signature stealing killing destruction we would be in trouble if jesus stopped there but he says i am come mm. he didn't say i have come i am has come to bring life and that you have that life more abundantly lavishly i am come that ye may have life i am come that ye may have solutions i have come to show you that there is a way out of this i am come to show you that there are possibilities are we together now now the last thing i want to say before we begin to pray i will continue to teach this because repetition is the key to persuasion the bible says according as his divine power please give it to us that second first um second peter chapter one from verse two please grace and peace verse two be multiplied unto you at through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord verse three it says according as his divine power hath given us so what gives us in this kingdom his divine power never forget this it is not faith faith is a channel that allows his divine power to pass the agency the force that is responsible for connecting us with spiritual possibilities is his divine power for many years there has been an argument about the workings of faith and the anointing there is no argument there are we together faith is the pipe that the power of god flows to to carry supernatural solutions to you if there is no faith there is no channel of the power from the throne room to your situation it will not be possible you don't choose faith or the power of god that's not a theology taught in the bible he never taught any of them in isolation his divine power every request on your list will be solved by his divine power now let me teach you this i've taught you again what is on you is what controls the results around you please never forget this the results around you do not fabricate themselves the results around you are mirrors they are a reflection of the kind the level the dimension of the grace that is upon you so i can know the grace on you by looking at the possibilities in your life i can know what grace has come upon you by looking at what changes it is impossible to increase in grace and your possibilities remain the same no the testimonies that recycle around your life are an attest they are they attest to the fact that this is the level and the extent of grace hear me every door can open it just depends on the grace asking it to open everybody is a giver it depends on the grace that asks them to give someone can refuse to bless you and yet carry a millionaire and meet someone else and say give me the privilege of blessing you nobody is really stingy the problem is that these possibilities don't happen in the earth dimension they are realities that are finished in the realm of the heavens and only executed the earth is a realm of execution the same way your body is the anointing and the grace on your life is what controls the possibilities around you please listen to me his divine power there are doors that have refused to open the doors are not stubborn the doors are only obedient to the last instruction 
and since the anointing speaking to it is not that high the door will remain obedient to the last instruction the day a higher authority speaks that door will open i assure you please don't generalize challenges challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them this is a message of hope for you to hear challenges are only relative to the grace that confronts them even the king could not solve the hunger problem of samaria here comes the prophet he did not come to solve the problem he said ah, okay i see that there is a situation everyone was hungry except the king and the prophet he said by this time tomorrow then a foolish man said even if god will open the window of heaven how will these things be and he says you will see it but you will not partake of it i believe in the power of god i've seen what the power of god can do stop wasting your time trying to change things physically creation has never been disobedient creation is the most obedient entity you can find the money you are looking for is not disobedient there is an unction that calls it if it's not there it is authorized to leave you creation is obedient when noah was ready to open the ark when he opened the ark there was a grace that came on every animal by themselves the bible never said noah went to the wilderness to chase them animals with no higher intelligence they found their way to the ark if animals can find their way to the ark why should your destiny helper find it difficult to find you why should breakthrough find it difficult to noah just stood there and allowed the grace to walk you rest only when the grace walks let me tell you life is hard when you are walking on your own in this kingdom we don't walk with our hands our hands only help us to receive the grace when it comes you enter your sabbath are you getting what i'm saying now the power of god is the spiritual mechanism responsible the signs and wonders that will happen in this place right now the healings and the miracles and the breakthroughs they will happen according as his divine power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed with the holy ghost and with power he says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him there are people inside there are people outside there are people standing in such sacrifice waiting for god it will be very wicked to share the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ and tell everybody bye bye return back with your challenge no i want you to believe god tonight and insist lord whatever will come upon me must come upon me whatever must change must change whatever must grow must grow whatever must die must die when there is no expectation it becomes wrong for god to visit you because one of the things that he gave men seven benefits given to man at creation one of it is the right to choose the will that god gave man is a fundamental right it's not for christians once you are a man you were given the right to choose salvation even at the detriment of your going to hell was left for your choice god will never 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 violate your right to choose i said before you life and death i said before you blessing and cursing i can only advise you choose life i said before you prosperity and poverty i said before you success and failure i said before you spiritual growth and and a low level of spirituality it's up to you to choose i choose life oh, and everything that comes with it i choose speed i choose increase i choose honor i choose dignity i choose open doors i choose open heavens it's a choice and if you're a family man here as for you and your house you can't choose for the whole world but you can choose for your house That the favor of God can rest upon your life tonight and that within the next one month things will shift in your life in a way and a manner 
that will surprise you. If you do not believe these things exist, you are not a Christian. A Christian is not just one who is born again. A Christian is one who has submitted to the ideologies of the kingdom as the ultimate value system of your life. Hallelujah. I'd like you to believe God. Don't say I've come for miracle service before. You see, let me tell you the truth. My assignment as a man of God is not to invite you. My assignment as a man of God is to continue to grow in grace. So that the things that would not answer to me in January must answer in June. Otherwise, what is the superiority of growth? If the same thing that did not answer to me three months ago refuses to answer now, I'm only maintaining my spiritual level. I'm not growing. There was a time when some spirits did not answer to the apostles. They went to Jesus asking a question and they said, why couldn't we do this? He said, this kind, there is a technology for taking this one out. See, let me tell you sincerely, there is enough grace to wipe the tears in your eyes. There is enough grace to turn the tables around. The anointing works like money. I've taught you. It can only solve the problems that are lower than it. The anointing does not generically solve every problem. No. No. You have to understand this. It's very important to know. I have, let me just steal 5-10 minutes to explain this. Look at this. This is 1,000 Naira. Look at this. And if I give you this 1,000 Naira, it can buy a bottle of water. Is that true? It can even buy you lunch or dinner, depending on where you eat. But this cannot buy you a car. This cannot pay a child's school fees, but it is still money. So if you want to pay a child's school fees, you need more of the same thing to the level that meets the demand. Every challenge in life has a level of grace attached to it. Not every grace solves every problem. If every grace solves every problem, then it doesn't make sense to grow in grace. Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost again. To what end? It says that you stretch forth your hands and that miracles, signs and wonders be wrought in the name of your Holy Son. There was a dimension of grace requiring a higher level of the anointing. Gehazi carried his rod, the rod of Elisha. And he came and laid it on the dead body. The body did not rise. But when the prophet came, that dead body came back to life. Every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. I know men of God have prayed for you. They are not fake just because you did not get the result. It is a reflection of the extent and the level of grace. And God grants the privilege of grace. And that's why as men of God, we must continue to grow in grace. So that what we could not solve yesterday, we can now solve tomorrow. That is the proof of growth. Are we together now? We are going to pray tonight. It's going to be a very quick walk in this place. I trust God and I believe that in the name of the Lord, that things will so change in your life, it will surprise you. Please rise up on your feet. Lift your voice and begin to mention specifics. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Rise up on your feet and please pray. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Oh yeah, I yeah, say. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Father, turn 
my life around. Turn my life around tonight. Turn my ministry around. Turn my family around. Is someone praying? Turn things around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be very fast. I minister by the Spirit. And the goal is for God to solve people's problems and deal with all the issues that are not of God. Praise the Lord. It will be very, very fast. I'm not sure I may have the time to prophesy tonight because I want us to finish very fast. Our time is gone. But let your heart be open. There is a God in heaven. Please don't be used to your situation. If you're a visitor here and you came, come insisting that I did not leave where I left to be here only to return back with stories. Uh-uh. That is not the God that we serve. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are three people. The power of God is coming on outside. Overflow one. Please, I'd like you to bring them out here. Please, let's start very quickly. We're going to pray. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. Three people. The power of God is coming upon them right now. A very strong anointing. Please bring them very quickly and then and then we'll pray. And then we'll pray. When you have them, please bring them very quickly. The Lord is already moving. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I want you to believe, believe that God will step in and turn your life around. Hallelujah. Turn your life around. From the back right to the center i'm seeing the power of god come on someone now from the back right to the center from the back right to the center please bring them out right now now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty an end comes to every oppression an end comes to every oppression. An end comes to every oppression. An angel of the Lord is still standing here. I'm still seeing this robe. Right now it's like smoke. Just moving across. Right now from the top to the back. Please bring them out. An end comes. God is stepping in to locate people by his spirit remember the bible says now the lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i command every oppression of darkness i want to pray now i see fire in this place this is what i'm saying by the spirit of the and listen at the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. That every spirit that is other than the spirit of the Christ, responsible for any challenge and any predicament, it must let you go now. Inside and outside, online. Are you ready? Father, let there be deliverance right now. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I cause every power bring them out right now every oppression of darkness it must go now it must go now oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh oh yeah yeah say oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah I'm still praying the Lord is showing me a vision of a padlock in the spirit 
I'm seeing a padlock and I'm seeing what looks like a key about to open it at the count of three again you're going to shout that name I see opening opening doors that have been closed are you ready now one two three be open now every closed door be open now be open now be open now close doors over families close doors over ministries close doors over destinies i decree and declare be open be open now bring them out please be open now be open now in the name of jesus overflow one two three across the road online be free now hallelujah i'm seeing i'm seeing like stones in a vision one two three four five and i'm seeing like a strange fire these are representations of altars listen there are families that have been covenanted to all kinds of ordinances fire is about to come from heaven right now in the name of jesus you are ready to shout now father every family here that is under any kind of ordinance i come tonight with the rod of a higher priesthood at the count of three let fire from heaven liberate that family right now one two three be free right now be free right now be free right now in the name of jesus we blot out handwritings we blot out handwritings bring them out i cause altars yokes of darkness ordinances speaking against the people of god Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Hey Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah 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 Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God go to the eastern states the eastern states right now God is bringing deliverance the east Abia Anambra state Enugu state Epoi state I'm seeing an anointing right now rest on people within that state let there be liberty right now let there be liberty right now you belong to that state the power of god is coming upon you right now right now even the lawful captives shall be delivered it's a sign and a wonder how god does it i'm seeing the map the east god is bringing liberty hallelujah the lord is showing me the map again i'm seeing an arrow and i'm seeing it go to benway benway state right now i stretch my hands benway benway that anointing you are from that state any ordinance tying your destiny must let you go right now must let you go right now this is by the authority of the kingdom benway state benway state liberation right now in the name of jesus christ release their destinies right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah 
I'm seeing fire just within this circumference in front. There are two families God wants to set free right now within this circumference. I'm seeing fire coming upon them right now. Bring them out right now by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Things must change in your life. My friend, this young man, lift your hands where you are. There is oil being poured on your head right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord is removing something that looks like an arrow from your head. Let it go right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let him go now. Hallelujah. Fire is still falling here. I'm seeing this deliverance is especially for women. An entity comes to molest you in the night. You go to bed and a strange spirit just comes. Right now in the name of Jesus, the Lord is asking me to just count two. And at the count of two, that fire is coming on people right now. One, two, let that fire come now. Liberation from ordinances of darkness. Every stranger that comes to manipulate your destiny, be free now. All those in front here, I decree the power that holds you. I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. At the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go. Leave them now. Release their destinies right now. Let there be restoration. Everything that has been stolen from hell, I command a restoration by the spirit of the living God, by the spirit of grace. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Be free right now. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything that must leave your life, insist it must leave your life now. The angel of the Lord is removing arrows. I'm seeing arrows, arrows coming out of people. That's what I'm seeing. Arrows, 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 arrows right now. Right here, arrows, arrows, go now. Arrows are being removed out of people. In the name of Jesus, Madam, be free right now. Be set free now. The Lord is setting someone free here right now. Someone in this row, I'm seeing fire. Just resting on someone, be free right now. In the name of Jesus, everything that has held you bound, be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. Be free right now. Be free right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those outside, keep praying. Something is resting upon you right now. The Lord asked me to come to overflow one. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing right now. I stretch my hands. Fire from the front to the back. Everyone under any kind of yoke. Right now, as I'm passing, be free. Be free. Help them, please. Out. Now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies now. Please help them. Whether you are an usher or not, help them. That yoke must let you go now. That yoke must let you go now. I'm passing this road right now. Once I pass you, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is taking everything that is not of God. Release them now. Release their destinies now. Release their destinies now. Let that fire rest upon you right now. Everything that has refused to open, be open now. Be open now. 
be open now. Be open now. Close doors. Be open now. Be open now. Now listen, overflow two. I may not touch you, but in the name of Jesus, I pass your robe. Except God is not God. If there is anything sitting on your destiny, it must let you go. Right now, be free. Be free. I bring you the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. Open up your gates, your gates, gates be open. Destiny be open now. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open now in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Fire is resting on this road, just right here. I'm seeing someone. The oppression of your family is coming to an end right now. I stand by this grace. please. Anyone here, anything that is not of God sitting on your destiny, right now at the count of three, all of you just, I'm seeing fire right now. And I'm seeing chains broken from people's legs. Right now, be, be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. Be set free now. There is a lady here. God is saying it is over. Right now, I'm seeing an anointing liberating a lady's family right now. Help them, please. Whether you're an usher or not, please, if anybody's falling close to you so they don't injure themselves. Hallelujah. Please shift. That lady, be free now. I'm pointing my hands to her. I command that devil to leave your family and your destiny now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Overflow three. Pray. Pray. Overflow three. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Something is about to release your destiny now. Overflow three. I came with an anointing. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Fire is falling from the top to the bottom. One, two, three. Go, go, go now. Every yoke, every altar. Be free now. Bring them out. Whether you are an usher or not, bring them out. Every oppression of darkness, right to the back. I declare by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be free now. Be free now. Bring them out. I'm seeing all kinds of spirits. I command every spirit that is not of the Christ. Release God's people right now. At the count of three. I'm seeing fire resting on people. And I'm seeing a number 41. 41 people. At the count of three, shout Jesus. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Right now, be free by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Be free right now. Every door that has refused to open, I open that door right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are 27 people here. The grace for speed is coming upon them. I don't know who you are, but right now, the grace for speed. I stand by the anointing from the front to the back. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive that anointing right now. Speed, I release speed over your life, over your destiny. Receive speed in the name of Jesus. Speed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Overflow three, hear me. There are people here, the Lord is telling me, no one rises in your family. When they get to a level, something brings them bow. And the Lord is saying, I should shift you by prophecy. I stand right now, I don't know where they are, but the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm seeing the number 17. Lord, I don't know where they are here, but in the name of Jesus, 
I declare move to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now I shift you to the next level right now hallelujah I'm looking at 14 people here you have the call of God upon your life and right now the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to locate you 14 people Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now apostles prophets evangelists pastors Deborahs, Lord where are they let that man to locate you now the call of destiny that is upon you oh prophet of God may that fire find you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there are 15 people here overflow 3 the spirit of revelation is coming on you unusual insight I don't know where they are but right now I'm seeing light not fire light light coming on people 15 people step into a new dimension of the revelatory grace right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord main auditorium please lift your hands main auditorium lift your hands I'm seeing seven people main auditorium lift your hands I'm seeing seven people the grace for speed I'll pray it on everybody but the main auditorium there is a grace for unusual speed on seven people they will begin to run by the anointing right now please hold them so they don't injure themselves main auditorium I stretch my hands at the count of three like Elijah may that grace come one two three receive that grace right now in the main auditorium step into the anointing for speed in the name of Jesus overflow three lift your hands every door that has refused to open over your ministry over your life held down by witchcraft in the name that is above all names at the count of three I'm seeing doors open in the spirit one two three let that door be open now be open now be open now the Lord wants to avert death over a family this year alone between last year and this year four people have died in your family four people have died and in the name of Jesus Christ an anointing is coming upon you right now let death be averted now in the name of Jesus now listen all of you at overflow three and the extension there whatever must live your life as I'm passing this place, please, I, I'm releasing my faith. Open your mouth now and declare, Lord, it must live my life now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Pray, please. All those in front here, the spirit that ties your destiny, I command at the count of three, let them go now. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Out of their lives. Out of their destinies. make sure you are praying make sure you are praying the power of God is resting on someone here there's an anointing coming on someone right here in the name of Jesus there's an anointing coming on someone here and the Lord is saying it comes to an end that family crisis comes to an end the power of God is resting on someone by my left here right now receive that anointing let it go in Jesus name Be free right now in Jesus' name. The power of God is resting on someone here. Right here, I'm seeing an anointing. 
right now is a prophetic grace there's someone here a prophetic grace is coming upon you right now by my left here in the name of Jesus drink of that anointing drink of that fountain may that grace rest upon your life right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus the Lord says it is over over right now by the power of the Holy Spirit look at me my friend the Lord is taking you to a height and a dimension in the spirit I lay my hands on you drink of that grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm seeing what looks like smoke just this region where I'm where you're looking at me right now there are four people I'm seeing the power of God like a wind just coming on them just this road right now Lord where are they I stretch my hands right now right now the power of the Holy Ghost is coming on those people and the Lord is saying it is over he's taking away captivity four of you by the spirit of grace let it be over right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus there is a family here marriage does not happen in that family but I'm seeing fire rest right now the embargo is being broken now the embargo is being broken whoever those people are an anointing is coming on you now for the sake of your family that yoke of marital delay is breaking right now is breaking right now in the name of Jesus please lift your voice and pray everybody pray in the spirit pray in the spirit there is one of you among those standing here there is a call of God upon your life an anointing is coming upon you you will be mightily used by God where is that person spirit of the living God the hand of God just near the gate here the power of God is coming upon that person right now a new dimension in the spirit the eyes that see and the ears that hear may you step into that level in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ my friend touch this gentleman for me lift your hands I stretch my hands over you I command I'm seeing chains all over your body I command those chains to give way now in the name of Jesus release him now let him go now by the power of the Holy Ghost I cut those chains I'm seeing chains from your head to your toe let me pray for those here please all of you are here I'm the Lord is opening my eyes and from here to the fence I'm seeing snakes and I'm seeing five people there is a major deliverance that is coming for a family right now in the name of Jesus may the anointing of the Holy Spirit locate those ones now five of you right now these spirits my God my God I'm seeing something living right now release them now release no matter how long release them now it is written that even the lawful captives shall be delivered I declare emancipation now by the Spirit of the Living God You are a gala. I want to pray for you. Are you alone? You came here alone. What do you do? I want to pray for you. The spirit of death is upon you. And the Lord is saying I should pray for you. So that those dreams you used to have. Seeing dead people. Is that true? You have dreams and... Too much, yes. The Lord is saying that you are going to be free from it right now. I declare in the name of Jesus. By the power of the hope. In the... There is, there is someone here. Hi. Academic delay over your family is breaking right now. I just... Please don't be carried away with acting this thing. I shunnedly to help people experience God. I'm praying. I don't know where that family is. But I'm scattered in this congregation. I stretch my hands. Let the anointing of the Holy Spirit family right now. I'm seeing a family here. None of you has a job. None of you. There are even a few graduates, but nobody at all. It's like the doors of jobs don't open. Right now, you're going to sense fire come up your hands. Real physical fire. And the Lord is saying, by that, help them. By that, that embargo is broken. Lord, I, I declare right now, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit rest upon those people and bring emancipation. Everyone lift your voice and begin to pray in the Spirit. Please begin to pray in the spirit. Don't say you are not inside. God can locate you from any direction. 
God can locate you from any direction. Bring me this lady, please. In the name of Jesus Christ, delay ends in your life. I stretch my hands and I pray. Delay, help her. The Lord is taking away witchcraft from this family. I command that devil, go now. See, it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. Just release your faith. In the name of Jesus, be free right now. Be free right now. My friend, the call of God is upon your life. There is, that is coming upon you. It's a healing anointing. I stretch my hands. May that grace begin to work effectually now. Step into that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Among all of you from here to here, the grace for speed is coming on two people. Listen. Those two people will start running now. Please hold them. Hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. That anointing right now. All across. Two you can't control yourself. Hold them, please. Whether you're an usher or I release that grace. Speed. Two people. Strange speed. God is ending delay right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing two of you. A prophetic anointing. You are not prophets. But you have been desiring this grace. The grace to see. From here. Right to where that lady with the veil is. I don't know where they are. But I stretch my hands. May that anointing find you right now. Accuracy of sight. I'm help them help them please help them please in the name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ name of Jesus Christ an angel of the Lord is taking away reproach there is a family here the Lord is saying the captivity ends now an anointing is coming upon you right now now in the name of Jesus someone here is it your sister has been trusting God for the fruit of the womb who is that listen where where is she at home what of you come how long who has had three miscarriages? She did. Three miscarriages. Go and tell her she will have a baby girl. That the Lord is giving her a baby girl. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you both. In the name of Jesus, let it come to an end right now. Let that captivity come to an end. In the name of Jesus, there's someone here, your family has a court What case? Who is that, please? court case don't make sure you don't tell us please they want to kill you because of what what did you do what did you do hold on I have to where are you from where is that I have to pray for you you have bad friends hold on let me talk to you eh you have very bad friends. Bad friends. You need to be delivered. This is not even your whole life. Huh? You know what I'm saying, right? You need to repent. Eh? Listen, when I make an altar call, run and come. Because the real salvation is you. It's not the issue of court case of this. You, you have friends that are criminals. And we have to pray. You hear what I'm saying? God is locating you to help you. Listen, let me tell you, my dear people. I mean, when God locates us like this, is because he wants to help Name. there's somebody here your name is Sarah where is that person Sarah hold on please don't don't let me just prophesy I, I my heart is full God wants to visit people stand up who is Sarah where are you from huh where are you from no no where state of origin I want to pray for you who is Godia yeah. Go dear. The Lord wants to visit you right now. Acting God truly wants to change your life. Yeah. I want to pray for you. 
whose mother is in the hospital i'm seeing someone's mother lying down in the hospital here your mom come i'm seeing lying down in portacot what yes i portacot you came from portacot go on i'm going to pray for, do i know you i've never seen you i want to pray for you god is turning your situation up. Please, as you are standing let your heart be open your people may be far don't ever think i'm just because i come outside like this to encourage you to let you know that you must not make it inside anywhere are we together the power of god is going to come upon you a loud shout that will be the person i'll prophesy to right now in just those outside here it's not something you can stand this is a sign and a wonder from the spirit of god that's not the shout the shout is coming it's a loud shout please bring the person when that happens that's the shout bring the person in the name of jesus christ my friend lift your hands jesus come do you what are you doing what do you do of god your own church you are assisting someone you came here not just to receive a miracle for your mother but you came to take fire stand up why you came listen to me you are going to go back and you will step into a diamond signs and wonders that will surprise you Sarah in the name that is above all names every oppression over your family I come against it right now I'm still hearing that name Godia who is that hold on please hold on where are you from huh you are from Kat Saminaka hold on please your sister blood sister same father same mother you've been praying for god to locate you it's okay you hi the spirit of death is over your family huh? that's what i'm saying i'm seeing you dreaming and dreaming of dead people they will come and they are calling you sometimes they are saying you should eat together this is the spirit of death coming on the family but in the name of jesus i use them as a point of contact if there is anybody under the sound of my voice that the spirit of death is coming upon you help her i caught spirit now name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a family money does not stay in your house no matter what happens once resources enter you love god but resources something must happen either sickness or they will steal it or something will come up i'm seeing what looks like a blue flame and it's resting on at least five people and the lord is saying an end comes to financial hardship father where are they right now i stretch my hands let that anointing locate you right now in the name of jesus christ please lift your voice and begin to pray my friend your hands shout jesus as loud as you can an end comes now in the name of jesus christ Please lift your voice and pray in the spirit, everyone. My dear, look at me. I command that spirit to leave you now. Of darkness must let you go in Jesus' name. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Please pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, everyone. Madam, help this woman so that she doesn't fall with it. I command everything that is not of God to let you go now. Release this woman's destiny now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oppression leaves right now. Someone here, there is a spirit that has oppressed your family. It must go now. I command that devil of darkness, help her please. That spirit must leave now. In the name of Jesus. Please everyone pray in the spirit. Everyone pray in the spirit. God is visiting us right now. One media person here, there is an anointing resting on someone. The Lord is bringing to end the captivity on your family. I'm seeing it by the Spirit of God. Captivity coming to an end. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus let it end now by the Spirit of the Living God let it end now in the name of Jesus my friend I'm seeing what what looks like a towel on you and the Lord is wiping away infirmity in the name of Jesus infirmity let it go right now please make sure you are praying in the name of Jesus the son of the living God the spirit of death there is a family here that spirit must go now the spirit of death release them now in the name of Jesus release them now release them now the spirit of death there will be no obituary I command that devil to go now Madam, excuse me. Madam, look at me. Come. Are you a man of God? Come. You too. Please come. I don't know you. Where are you coming from, sir? Where do you, what do you have to do with Adamawa? Is it Anambra? Huh? Who is from Anambra? Me. From Anambra State. You came all the way. There is a grace to see that God is going to be delivering to you. Number two, there is speed in ministry that God, I don't know you, sir. I've not seen you. You're, you're together. You're a man of God, too. You're a man of God. You're a ministry. Can I pray for you, sir? Because I'm seeing this anointing, strange anointing come on you. You will go back and it's going to be fire all the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this man of God. Step into that grace in the name of Jesus. The anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will never be the same. Can I pray for you, sir? By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, drink of this wine, you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Mommy, let me pray for you. Hold on, please. Please stand up. Stand up. Who is Jennifer? Jennifer. 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 The Lord is visiting. The Jennifer I'm seeing, you are outside. You are holding a child. Jennifer. Jennifer. Is there someone like that? Oh, please oh, confirm. I, what's your name? They always confirm before you allow Jennifer, them. Sir. Jennifer. Is this your child? Yes, sir. Where are you coming from? From, this is my state. Huh? From GRA. No, no, where, where are you coming? Kaduna State. Kaduna State. Yes. I want to pray for you. So that the spirit that makes marriages to not work in your family will not catch up with you. Does Amen. it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, I want to pray for you. Well, this boy has a great destiny. Forget about whatever it is that has happened or not happened. I want to pray for you. The Lord located you to bless you. What's his name? Fortune. 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 Yes, I will pray for you. Mama, where are you coming from? I come from Togo. You came from Togo? Yes, just yesterday. Just yesterday. Yes. What are you trusting God for? Ah, my daughter in America. She's the one that sent me to you. She has been seeing you in her dream. You have done so many things for her in the dream. Then she said that I must come so that show me you will not get her. She's asking for contract. That is contract that she's seeking for. She... Just calm down, madam. You came all the way from Togo. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God will do in your life. First, not even just your daughter. Eh? Leave your daughter's issue. God is going to bring your daughter but it's you first that back pain Jesus. Huh? that back pain that you have you get up in the morning and there's severe back pain that back pain will leave you now that's number one number two the dead people you see in your dream huh? sometimes you go to bed and you see dead people, people who have died but they are alive talking to you I need to pray for you and then number three God is going to visit your daughter tell her the month of August is a month of breakthrough in the name of Jesus, be free right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why are they here, please? Sir? You are a teacher. Did you apply for a job? Yes. Where? Uh, uh, International. Because I'm seeing a letter and I'm seeing congratulations. It, hold on. Ah, you are a teacher. Yes, Where? With uh, KHMS. What is Dambo International? It's 
a school. Did I, you apply there? Yes. Like I'm seeing please. that they are going to give you a job. Huh? I will pray for you, sir. Because this teaching you are doing is only for a while. There is a grace of entrepreneurship upon you. And that grace is going to come and God will shift you to a dimension. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. How many children do you have? One. Just one. Yes, sir. I have one outside. No. Hold on. Don't be embarrassed, eh? I'm seeing one child, then the vision changes and I'm seeing two again. Huh? You have one, you have two. What is the mystery? Explain. Before I married her, I have a son outside. Okay, before you married her, you have a child. Yes, sir. The, yes, sir. Okay, I want to pray. Don't, don't make sure you treat the child with honor and grace. All the children that came out from you are great children. You understand? Please don't fight that child, eh? Madam, you hear what I'm telling you? Yes. I know that we live in a, a society that sometimes all kinds of troubles can come, but may God grant you the grace to manage things well. Sir, there is a grace of wealth that is upon you. Please look at me. It looks like you are a teacher, but your destiny is not a teacher. You are a real kingdom financier, and there is a grace for finances that should come upon you. Please look at me. You see this woman? She's a good woman. Don't ever let the devil use the face of any devil and use her face to make it look as if this is an evil woman. And don't let any prophet anywhere tell you this woman is a witch. In the name of Jesus, I tell you, God gave you a good woman. She's a good woman. Madam, you are a good woman. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for you, sir. Please hold my hands. In the name that is above all names, I open up every closed door over your life and destiny. I shift you to that realm of wealth in Jesus' name. The person, look up, please. The person who comes to molest you when you sleep, it comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus, every fraternity with darkness is gone now and gone forever. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why, why are they here. Who is Sarah? Are you married? We are not more together. Huh? I have two children, but we are not together with you. You are father. not together with your husband? Yes. Were you married? No. This is what I'm saying. Come. You need to be delivered, eh? If not, I'm seeing four children. You will add two more, and yet you are not married. I'm not, I hope you are not feeling bad. I hope you are not embarrassed. God reveals so that he can redeem, eh? You are not a bad woman. You are not an immoral woman. It's a spirit. You hear what I'm saying? Come, let me pray for you. Aye. The power of God is coming on one of you here. One of you standing here now. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming on one right now. It's not something you can resist. I'm, this, I'm seeing it in the spirit that the power of God is going to come upon one of you. And when that happens, then I'm going to prophesy to that one person. Right now, it's an anointing from heaven that is coming upon one of you here. And the Lord is saying that he's taking away sickness from the midst of you. Taking away sickness. My dear, in the name of Jesus, is it the same man that has the children? Yes. Huh? Yes. Why doesn't he want to marry you? He didn't pay for my dowry. He didn't pay for your dowry? Yes. Go and tell him that I said he should pay for your dowry. Huh? Dowry is not building project. He should pay for your dowry and give these children a chance. Please. At this level, it's no longer about their comfort. The children need a father. May God grant him grace and give him money to pay your dowry and be a good man in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing written in the air, polygamy. God is breaking that spirit now. No, no, no. Just please, just keep quiet. I'm ministering. There is a spirit of polygamy. Everybody in that family, you can't do with one man alone or one woman alone. That anointing is locating people right now to break the spirit. It's a covenant. It's not a desire. Coincidences continue to put themselves together to lead people to trouble. Right now, that spirit, please help them. In the name of Jesus, inside, outside, everywhere, the spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. The spirit of polygamy is being broken right now. Sir, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from, sir? 
Port Harcourt, what do you do? Do business. You do business. But things are not going well. Huh? If I don't pray for you, I'm seeing you in the court because of money, debt. Huh? I hope you're not embarrassed. You came here so that I pray for you. What are you trusting God for? I'm trusting God for breakthrough in my business. Breakthrough in your business. First, your... My wife um, has listened to your tape for about seven days now. And the last dream she had, you came to pray for her. And she insisted that you come through the night today. I will pray for you. More than business breakthrough, sir, is your relationship with God. Do you understand? Please don't be embarrassed, but your relationship with God. In this kingdom, we prosper as our souls prosper, not at the detriment of our soul. So that there's, there's too much spiritual distraction around your life. I pray that God will cause your heart to love him more than money in the name of Jesus. And that in so doing, he will bless you and lift you. I decree and declare, I don't know why all of you came, but in the name of Jesus, I declare that everything that is not of God leaves you right now. Where is this lady from? Come, where are you from? I'm from Nesara Ostage. You are from where? Nesara. How many are you? I'm from extended family. We are many. Plenty. You are plenty. Yes. You don't know how many. Yes, but oh. in my mother's side, we are eight. Two have gone. We are six now. Are you married? No. The man coming around your life, I drive him from your life now and forever. Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yes. The man that I'm seeing, I drive him in the name of Jesus, the son Amen. of the living God. He will go back and you'll be surprised. He will tell you there's no time. He cannot call you. He's busy. Just know that God drove him from your life to save you from trouble. Are you ready for a child now? Tom, you have to be careful. Huh? I send him again in the name of Jesus Christ before he destroys your innocent life. What do you do? I'm Lenny Salom. Huh? I'm Lenny Salom. You are, I'm not here. I'm Lenny Salom. Hairdressing. Yes, sir. I'll have to pray for you. Come. Huh? I place favor on your life. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick shortly, but the Lord is showing me a very serious vision. I'm looking at people, but I'm not seeing a face. And this is not the first time I see these kinds of vision. The moment I see these kind of things is a sign that you know, the devil has just tried to tarnish the glory of people. The Bible says to not let your good be evil spoken of. There, there is a way that you are good, but it's like people continue to misunderstand you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands. I'm seeing an anointing coming on those people. That veil that covers your face, always putting you in trouble. I tear off that veil now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. We have to be fast. Now please listen very carefully. God is touching everyone. Every single one under the sound of my voice. Three things will happen right now. Number one, make sure you are here with your prayer request. If you're not here with it, please pen down. It's an act of faith very quickly. What you're trusting God for, lift it up. Let the ushers have it. Number two, we're going to minister to the sick right now. We'll do it very, very fast. And then I'll pray on it and we'll prophesy. Open doors for everyone. We have to make this very, very fast. Are we together? While you're doing that, please be praying in the spirit. There are people here who are trusting God for themselves and their families. Please listen. Let's listen outside, inside. Let's listen to the instruction. Please. All those who are standing, trusting God for fruit of the womb, whether you are in overflow, one, two, three, I want to pray for you myself. Are we together? Particularly for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And, but then aside from that, um, overflow one, please listen. Listen. From the start of overflow two, that means the end of CGC, and inside here, that's overflow two. Um, overflow three is from the end of CGC down to second equa. Okay, you are overflow two B. Let's call it two B. Are we together? Then the overflow from the beginning of this fence down, right down there, we'll call you overflow two C. Please listen. Then there's overflow three. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. This is the main auditorium 
this is overflow one this is overflow two then from this place down to second equa is overflow two b from that same place down is overflow two c so that so that you would know if you are trusting god no matter what overflow for the fruit of the womb i'll pray for you but then all who are in here overflow one i mean overflow here please you're trusting god for healing come stand here overflow one come and stand in front of your projector stand overflow two stand in front of your projector stand overflow two a please create a space for them there overflow two a create a space for them there and then overflow two c stand in front of your projector stand and then overflow three you can stand in um in front of your projector stand those online connect by faith and then we'll pray we'll pray with you we're going to do this very fast we thank god there are many hands today and while they minister to you i would like you to believe god for a miracle you're a man of god you're a ministry here open up your heart and connect you are trusting god for the grace for signs wonders make sure that you connect the worship team will be leading us through powerful sessions of worship while we do that and concurrently while that is happening please make sure you submit your prayer request everyone make sure you pen down your prayer request and then we are going to pray on it and let the god of heaven visit us right now in the name of jesus praise the lord um ejimi and promise and bishop manasseh Ejimi and Promise and Bishop Manasseh will do Overflow 3. There are quite a number of people there. Overflow 3. Um, Benga will do Overflow 2. Overflow 2. Pastor Alpha and Ima. You do Overflow 1. Um, overflow 1. We need a way of reaching Overflow. Kenny. Kenny will do Overflow to be overflow to be will do overflow to be and then Isaac Isaac in media you do overflow to see let's make it that way praise the Lord father we stand under this corporate grace and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that as we minister to everyone across let your healing power touch deliver set free in the name of jesus do this and be glorified even by the power of the holy spirit please we'll do it very very fast and while you are seated make sure you are agreeing releasing your faith in the name of jesus madam you lift lift your hands you this woman no the one wearing blue and white yes lift your hand i'm seeing oil coming on your head and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's lifting you this is what i'm seeing an anointing is coming on you right now and the lord is saying he's taking away reproach and he's bringing an oil of gladness upon your life in the name of jesus father let there be miracles signs wonders in the name of jesus christ amen let's stretch your hands to the prayer request Begin to pray in the spirit, Lord, you are the God that answers prayers. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Pray over these requests. He said, these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. There is a covenant of answered prayer in this place. Lift your voice and pray. Father, I decree and I declare. I prophesy, I proclaim by the spirit of grace that this is a representation of the pain of people a representation of their hunger when the lord turned again the captivity of zion are you praying decree and declare that everything written here in the name of jesus will become a testimony everything written here we invoke the power of the holy ghost upon every request here supernatural deliveries terminations of delay open doors new spiritual dimensions in the name of jesus admissions graduations jobs 
marriages, children, restoration, advancement, promotion. In the name that is above all names, we decree and declare. Make sure you are praying. Make your declaration. These that are brought before the God of all flesh will never, never, never return as a disappointment. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those online joining us from all over the world, connect in the name of Jesus. From America to Asia, the UK, Canada, everywhere, we decree and declare that your requests are turned into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I want you to understand that this is not a ritual. This is a mystery. Are we together now? There are all kinds of testimonies that have come in. I can prophesy and there is so much. I can be limited. I cannot discern everybody's expectation. But this is a representation of your hunger. It's a representation of your tears. And let me tell you this. Please don't get familiar with this. This is not some, some spiritual thing just for the fun of it. There is power in what we are doing. It's guided by understanding. It's guided by an anointing. And God has a covenant, is protected by his jealousy. In the name of Jesus, Paul said, For this cause I, Paul, bow my knees before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may grant unto you. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon you that the Egyptians you see today, that you will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus, every request here that is a death sentence cancer hiv and any kind of incurable disease we turn it around right now in the name of jesus every impossible situation represented here may the god of wonders arise tonight in the name of jesus and do wonders by the power of the holy ghost for those of you who have submitted these requests on behalf of your loved ones I declare may the angel of God's presence these angels that do not know time and distance may they go to your various homes and to your loved ones and bet supernatural solutions in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare that you remain above this challenge forever in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare over your life, we're entering the second half of the year. It says, revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the year. I decree and declare, every spiritual weariness, every prayerlessness, it dies right now in the name of Jesus. Passion for the things of the spirit like never before. Hunger for spiritual things in the name of Jesus. I declare prayer fire like never before. Let it rest upon your life now. I decree and declare an appetite for God and the things of God. I declare you receive it right now. I pray over your life. Every long-standing issue, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have sought counsel, it has refused to change. In the name that is above all names, I decree and declare, by this time next month, return with your testimony. By this time next month, return with your testimony. Please believe it, don't just shout amen, believe it. I come against patterns. You have seen it in others. You saw it in your father. You saw it in your loved ones. You saw it in your siblings. Now it's beginning to happen. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I cancel every pattern now. I cancel every pattern now. It works for everybody until it gets to your turn. Then something happens. You will see it, but you never possess it. I declare right now, that spirit that makes you to see things and never step into it is caused by the God of heaven. Caused by the God of heaven. Everything that 
that was given to you in the realm of the spirit already i declare by the power that raised christ from the dead this month coming it must enter your hands i declare that it must enter your hands There are families where is the women that feed the men. Have you seen such families? No matter how hardworking the men are, they never feed the family. They get up in the morning and play draft from morning till night while the women go to fend. It's an anomaly. I declare by the Spirit of God, I'm praying for the men now. The grace for establishment and the grace to be satisfied early receive that anointing right now he says satisfy me early i'm saying it again everybody here who is a man and it looks like the devil wants you to depend on people for the rest of your life i decree and declare like jacob laban must let you go in the name of jesus I pray for every Mordecai here. You have been good to others. You have been good to kings. Your records have been written, but you have not been rewarded. In this season, by the Spirit of God, we open a book of remembrance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Anyone here called jobless by the God of heaven, between now and the next three months, like the ark of God in the house of Obed Edom, I decree and declare jobs that will be consolations to your years of pain. May my God give it to you. Every dying business, hear the word of the Lord. I don't care what has happened by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead. I speak to you, come back to life now. Come back to life now. Everyone who is in ministry here, no matter what level there are dimensions, I pray for you. You will go back to your various churches, fellowships and assemblies and a dimension of fire, a dimension of insight you have never seen, receive in the name of Jesus. Everyone here called barren by the God of heaven in the name of Jesus according to the time of life return with your children these are not empty prophecies believe them they are backed up by the jealousy of God they will come to pass in the name of Jesus I don't know where the helpers of your destiny are but in the name of Jesus Every man who must arise in this season for your sake to favor you wherever they are around this globe by the spirit of grace I call them to your life now I call them to your life now The Bible says that strangers shall feed your flock it says your gates shall be open continually it shall not be shut day nor night that you will receive the forces of the gentiles people you do not know i compel them to be interested in your lifting in the name of jesus christ i prayed a prayer like this one time and one of us god just opened a door and a bank met him to sell a property for them worth 450 million naira listen it doesn't take time it doesn't take time there is the creative dimension of prophecy that can order things in your life every area of struggle i stand by the god of heaven who is called ebenezer the god of jeshuron in the name of jesus receive help from the lord I 
I want to pray for people who have ideas and have projects but it seems to never go out of the book you have ideas you have projects it's just to connect you with somebody who has the interest nobody helps you on their own they are called by prophecy in the name of Jesus right now I connect your ideas to your helpers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I forgot to pray for those who are in various institutions writing their exams I know that many people had started their exams some have written and the honest truth is that some of you have written nonsense you need the mercy of God in the name that is above all names much more than what you have written in the name of Jesus may the mercy of God show up in your exam there is a dimension of finances that comes by prophecy please pay attention our time is gone but I want to speak this into your life there are people who are not very smart the prophetic dimension is not a license to not be valuable the prophetic dimension is a system of advantage to bridge tragedy while you learn it's a system of God's mercy it will be foolish to believe that wealth is only by principles there are laws and there are irrefutable principles that make for the foundation but there is the ordinance of prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God the God who has helped me by his grace the God who has helped this ministry I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit between now and the end of July may your finances turn around in a way that will surprise you may your finances turn around in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for those who are under any kind of project building project whatever it is the hand that started that project is the same hand that must finish that project in the name of Jesus Christ everyone here due for promotion but has been kept because of the wickedness and the sentiments of men go back into your next level in the mighty name of Jesus Christ finally I want to pray for you honor is the ability to discern to celebrate and to reward a man for his uniqueness it's not enough for your value to be discerned you must live a rewarded life you will be frustrated if you do not live a rewarded life i pray for you the eyes that can perceive and can discern your value i connect you to those eyes in the name of jesus any pit you have found yourself in i must pray this financially whatever it is you have found yourself in a situation where only god can bring you out may that god you believe in bring you out of it now in the name of jesus finally i want to prophesy again the grace for this year's prophetic word the Lord declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Every part of that prophecy that is yet to speak in your life, by the force of right words and by the power of the, no, the name that is above all names, I declare to you, may your life experience extraordinary fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ may you return with testimonies some of you this night before you get to your homes your phones you will see text messages that are full of wonders in the name of Jesus Christ 
Father, we give you all the praise. We bless you because you have honored this house. You have made it a place of answers. You have made it a place of strange testimonies. Let everything that you have done tonight by your spirit return as testimonies. Let it not just be a ceremony. In the name of Jesus, we declare by the spirit of the Christ, testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, very quickly, I will make an altar call and then we'll take a few very important announcements and we're done. I apologize, our time is gone. You are here in this place. Please, let's minimize movement, especially outside. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've not given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to encounter his salvation and his mercy. Please listen. Or you are here, you are saying, man of God, I've seen the wonders. I once gave my heart to the Lord. But as it is right now, I need mercy. I need grace. I need to start afresh. You are here inside overflow one two three and all the other annexes i want to give you five minutes you want to make it right with jesus wherever you are i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand right here it'll be my joy to lead you to jesus christ don't wait for someone be the first i'll count one to five wherever you are please start running clear the way for them please outside one quickly quickly please if you're coming run quickly run to jesus two Win that war today, win that war today, win that war today. The Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart as they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Three, someone is still coming. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. I expect people to come from outside. Please clear the way for those coming from outside. Clear the way for those coming from outside. Overflow one, two, three. If you're coming, don't be sluggish. Run very quickly. We're out of time. Run quickly. Run quickly. We're out of time. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm ashamed and afraid of my colleagues and contemporaries. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Give them a big God bless you whilst they come takes a lot of courage but win that war young and old run to jesus the bible says ye must be born again <laughs> hallelujah praise the lord i want to salute all of you thank you so much for coming to make this decision lift your right hand high to heaven and say this after me you're not reciting a poem this is from the depth of your heart jesus is here say after me lord jesus I believe in you that you are the son of God I have seen your wonders and I declare that I need you this night I declare that you are my Lord you are my Savior you are my King I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life. I am a child of God. I'm changed forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, I present to you the ones you died for. I thank you because when you hung on that cross, they were worth your blood. They were worth the tears. They were worth the death. I pray in the name of Jesus, according to scripture, your sins are forgiven. And the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare forever you go from glory to glory even by the Spirit of God everything that is not of God I come against it right now the grace to live victorious is released upon you from today you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen I congratulate you I salute you very quickly hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching 
in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 